Want to know how to swim in lava forever? Or what the absolute best way to enchant armor is? Here are 857 super secret Minecraft things you probably didn't know. Everyone knows bedrock is a completely unbreakable block. And in most Minecraft servers, breaking bedrock will get you banned. However, there's a catch. As in the nether, if you climb a ladder placed on the very top block of bedrock and throw an ender pearl like this, you teleport straight through the ceiling, putting you on top of the nether. But that's not all, as it's actually possible to break bedrock as well. All it takes is this simple TNT machine. Hop under the trap door, flick the lever, and right click as fast as you can with a piston in your hand. If you click fast enough, the bedrock below the piston will glitch out and disappear. Just like my dad when I was a child. Then he came back and ran away again. But a more obvious way to get banned is to hack. Auto clickers are the most common hack, letting you click super fast without doing anything. This lets you place blocks super fast, bridge in crazy ways, or absolutely dominate in 1.8 PvP. But if you're really trying to get banned, fly hacks are the way to go. And yes, they do exactly what you think, allowing you to fly anywhere you want in survival mode. For obvious reasons, almost no servers allow this, making it one of the best ways to get banned. But if you want to go out with a bang, you should try lava casting. If you go onto 2B2T, a server with no rules, you'll see these everywhere. Using lava and water, people build these huge lava casts to sky the landscape of servers. They're super annoying to get rid of, but really easy to build. Start by building a staircase straight up into the sky, as high as you possibly can. Then, it's as simple as placing a lava bucket at the top, waiting, then placing water above, and ta-da! Now all your friends hate you. Well, more so than before, if that's possible. Ever wanted to get overpowered on an SMP so you can kill everyone? Because everyone knows the best way to get banned is to start wars and kill people. Well, there's a special trick with villagers that lets you get rich. Gather a whole bunch of villagers together and simply let a zombie loose on them. It might sound dumb, but trust me, once they've been turned into zombie villagers, cure them with weakness potions and golden apples. This basically makes you their daddy, and they'll give you a nice discount on all trades. Then you can repeat this until all their trades cost just one emerald. So if someone asks how you've got mending on literally everything, don't tell them the secret. Apparently you can repair iron golems. If you see one or cracked up after a fight, you should be able to take some iron ink and right click on it. Hey, yeah, it fixes it right back up. That's super cool. I recently learned you can place beds underwater. Well, what's the point if you can't sleep in it? I mean, surely I can't hold my breath down here for eight hours. I'd. Oh. I guess I can. Okay, but obviously that doesn't work under lava. It's, what the hell, Mojang? In real life, people think coal and diamonds are both made out of the same thing. This means that if you apply enough pressure, like with a piston, you can literally turn coal into diamonds. And surprise, surprise, it doesn't work. Probably because it's not even true in real life. It's a myth there too. Double busted. It's been forever since we got a new note block sound, but apparently Mojang secretly added a new one just recently. All you have to do is place them on top of an iron block and right click them 64 times each. Then when you activate them, Oh god, why? Most of us know now that you can make a bird cage by simply just pushing some glass on top of a parrot. But come on, doesn't that feel cruel? Instead, give them some room to breathe with a hanging scaffolding cage like this. And to make sure our little friend is as happy as can be, try making this advanced bird bath. Place an armor stand with a helmet on top of three layers of snow. Then push a floor block and the wall down from above and finish with a slab and some signs. A netherite helmet might work better for some designs, but that's expensive. I think I'll just stick to leather. The most illegal item in all of vanilla Minecraft has to be the debug stick. You can only get it with commands, but it lets you do all sorts of crazy weird things that literally feel like hacks. You can make strange beds with no pillows, white grass, cursed flower bushes, and even floating water. And pow! I'm outside your window. My favorite build hack to use the debug stick for though is to just add a little more interest to my creative builds. You can turn this strange and boring bamboo farm into something cool looking by connecting the fence and adding leaves to the bamboo. It's literally magic. Beehives kind of look like empty storage containers, so you can use them for extra decoration in a cluttered storage room or attic. They also work great as drawers or a bedside table. You can make any English letter in a 4x3 space using different combinations of slabs and stairs. This chart by Cookie Dough Bread shows you exactly how to spell out anything you want super easily. There are tons of ways to add tiny details to your builds in Minecraft, but one of my favorites is this method of making footprints. Just chuck some invisible item frames down and then place some stake in them. All of a sudden, you've got some weirdly convincing looking footsteps. Speaking of bombs... Uh, 
I'm sorry. Did you know that TNT dropped into an end portal doesn't actually explode until you jump in yourself? It even keeps its fuse length. So if you drop it from around 70 blocks up, it'll instantly blow up whoever is unfortunate enough to head through next, along with all the valuable gear they were bringing too. Dripstone works too if you're not feeling that mean, but let's face it, you'd rather blow them up. Another great way to blow someone sky high is with TNT minecarts. Sure, there's all these ways to create nukes with them, but let's face it, you're gonna have to end up cleaning that up. So instead, if someone has a railway down to their mines, just add a couple TNT minecarts at the end. When they run into them and blow up, if anything, you're just helping them mine. Since they were added in the 1.13 update, bubble columns have been the absolute best elevator solution we've had. And conveniently, there's tons of ways to trap them and make your friends' lives just a little bit worse. The easiest is to surround the top in obsidian, so they have to spend ages mining it while underwater to get out. But my personal favorite is to shoot a bunch of tipped arrows in the water that hit anyone coming up. Instant damage or poison works to give them a real scare, but I prefer to use slowness to create just the tiniest inconvenience for them. One of the simplest ways to really make someone mad in Minecraft is to simply just fill up their house with water. It takes you two minutes to place a bunch of water or ice on their roof, but will take them forever to place and break blocks everywhere to get rid of it all. If you want to be really evil, you can bone meal a bunch of kelp to make all of the water source blocks, so without sponges, they're gonna be there for years. If you want to take your friend out in a super creative way, try using this super unique trick. When there's enough entities in a small place, it'll start dealing damage to them. That means if you can get your friend to fall into a hole with a bunch of minecarts, it'll start damaging them automatically. This quick hack lets you harvest an entire field in an instant. Plants need a certain light level, so if you have a redstone lantern to provide that, then switch it off when it's time to harvest, all the veg will burst out at once, ready to be picked up or collected in hoppers under the soil. This hack is a fresh twist on a classic. Paintings can be used to hide entrances, but that can be too obvious. Instead, hide a pressure plate behind it that activates when you drop an item through the painting, activating whatever secret mechanism you want to set up. Sometimes smart hacks use the weirdest items, like this stairway of dripstone and smaller and smaller cake slices. Use a horse which can travel over a single block height without jumping, and the weird hitboxes of the items will send you rocketing up the stairway at high speeds. Tired of creatures jumping fences? Try this hack where you set down a bunch of trap doors and flip them up. They'll act as fences that the AI just can't understand and won't be able to escape from. Here's Johnny, the murderous vindicator, and here he is in this weird hack, killing these animals for our food. See, when you tag a vindicator with the name Johnny, he will kill anything in sight. And if you trap him in a mob farm, the animals he kills drop their loot into the chest without you having to lift a finger. In this super old snapshot, pumpkins have a truly crazy secret. If you spawn in pumpkin stems that have grown further than eight stages, they'll start to turn into this weird furnace plant. This happens because the textures got totally messed up in the files, but I prefer to imagine them growing those fire flowers from Mario. In any official update before 1.8, you could use this illegal fire item to craft chainmail armor. The weirdest thing was that you couldn't even get the fire item, so it was a completely pointless craft. You can get invisible armor in Minecraft. Right now, I'm completely invisible! And all I'm wearing is this suit. To get this amazing armor, all you have to do is type this command and give yourself 100 armor points. The same as a full set of netherite armor, except totally invisible. Brown mushrooms, dragon eggs, and end portal flames all actually give off light. And the respawn anchor will slowly emit more and more lights depending on how much glowstone you put into it. Which I think is awesome! Zombies are pretty harmless on their own, but when there's dozens of them, they become harder to deal with. So it's absolutely terrifying that every night there's a chance of a literal zombie apocalypse spawning and attacking you and any nearby villagers. If you somehow manage to bring a hoglin through a portal to the overworld, it'll turn into a super gross looking corrupted zoglin. These things will roam around menacingly attacking any passive mob they see. Don't worry me, I'll be angry too if I look like that. Ever see this mob? Because if you have, you're one of the lucky ones. This is called the Clux Room. And yes, it drops mushrooms. This mob was released exclusively for Minecraft Earth. And with a 2% chance of naturally spawning, you don't want to lose this guy. But mushy? Mushy, why? If you're in Minecraft Bedrock Edition and you catch on fire, don't panic! Just craft a campfire, and you can light it for completely free just from standing on it. Oh man, what a good trade-off. Now that's what I call making the best out of a bad situation. In the early versions of Minecraft InDev, you could stack up to 99 items in Minecraft. This was later changed by Notch to the iconic 64 items you can hold today. Hey, you do you, bro. Everyone knows if you hit a zombie piglin in a swarm, it's not gonna be a fun 
time for you. However, if you manage to one-shot that same zombie piglin with an overpowered weapon, all of the piglins will get confused and stop targeting you, allowing you to finish them off one by one. Hey, it's fine, they're zombies, so die piglins. Did you know if you splash a potion of poisoning onto a creeper, then let them explode, you'll end up seeing a lingering poison effect? This can be used for blowing up your friend's base and then finishing their dogs off. Thank me later, you monster. If you're near an ocean with your friend, have them crouch down in front of the water and pay attention to their name tag. If you look closely, you can see the water is transparent, allowing you to see anything you want. So if your friend's got a secret base, we will find it and we will kill your dogs again. Talking about the ocean, if you take an iron golem and try to sink them, you'll realize they literally can't drown. This means they can stay at the bottom of the ocean for years without taking a single hit of damage. Man, that's just sad. Yeah. This can't be said for snow golems though. They don't even get to enjoy a swim. Man, that just feels wrong. But there's actually an even more efficient way to use coal, and that's by simply just crafting a campfire. With just one coal, you can cook infinite food by right-clicking it on the campfire. Each one takes 30 seconds to cook, but given you can do four at once, it's actually faster than a furnace too. In PvP games like Sky Wars and Bed Wars, a simple act of bridging is incredibly important, so pros have developed tons of ways to bridge as fast as possible. There's speed bridging that requires timing your crouches perfectly, breezily bridging where you spam A and D and click around 15 times a second, god bridging where you literally just walk backwards and time your clicks perfectly, and the most insane of all, tele bridging. There's really nothing else to say about this other than you should probably go outside if you can do it. There's also this one, but like, come on. Villages are notoriously hard to move around. You either spend the next decade of your life using boats or just pray they do what you want them to. But there's actually a hidden pro strategy you can use to get hundreds of villagers to go exactly where you want. If you destroy every nearby bed and place one down near a bell where you need them to move to, ringing the bell will summon every nearby villager to that bed. Speaking of villagers, the best survival players know that they're actually the most overpowered thing in the game. If you find a librarian and destroy its workstation, you can place it down to repeatedly change its trades. And given that their first trade is usually an enchantment book, you can keep doing this until you find exactly the enchantment you want. You can even kill and cure it to get a perfect deal. Losing your base in Minecraft is a real problem. It can be super hard to keep track of in a literary infinite world, and coordinates can be really hard to remember. That's why it can be a great idea to not only craft a map, but also name a banner, place it down, and right-click it with the map. This will give you a permanent marker you can follow home that's way cheaper than a lodestone compass. One of the oldest ways to mark your base, though, is to simply just pillar up super high with blocks, giving you a beacon to follow home. These pillars can be useful in tons of places, but can be really annoying to tear down. So if you don't have scaffolding, try using gravel or sand. Then whenever you want to get rid of it, just place a torch or pressure plate below, and it will delete itself in a very satisfying way. Did you know in recent Minecraft versions you can actually clutch without any items? All you need to do is hit crouch and space just before landing. And voila! I'm alive! One thing only pros know is if you push yourself into the end portal from underneath with a piston, you won't spawn on the main end island, and instead will spawn at your overworld coordinates in the end, which can make tons of super deadly traps. Soul Sand already slows your player down a ton, but adding ice below will make you move even slower. But there's a way to be even slower. Cobwebs! You now have the slowest floor known to man. But if you're fast enough, you can actually use a bow and arrow to break minecarts and boats to troll your friends. Just make sure you got good aim, or you might just pull a JF Kennedy. And while we're at it, did you know evokers can turn blue dyed sheep into red dyed sheep? Yeah, pretty wild. Who knew they hated blue? The biggest mistake people make is to mine randomly for the resources they need. You want diamonds? Go to a river. It turns out that if a river has a clay patch, that is a sign there are diamonds below. Start at the center of the clay patch, go two blocks in the Z direction, and mine straight down. You'll be swimming in diamonds. But never mine straight down. If you're not careful, you can break the block below you and fall straight into some lava. So, always mine down with two blocks and have a water bucket so you can clutch. So many people make this simple mistake. Stop making low ceilings! Even when mining, a two block tall staircase tunnel is a recipe for bonked heads whenever you go up or down. Also, doesn't the high ceiling look so much nicer in your house? Who doesn't love farming? But a big mistake people make is to stick a single block of water and surround it in veg. That water can only feed so many plants. So instead, set the water and vegetables in rows, and your plants will actually grow faster. Glowstone and sea lanterns are things of the past. Instead, try placing turtles 
turtle legs on top of end rods to make a lump shade. By placing an armor stand with a chainmail helmet inside a block like this, you can add a pressure plate on top and make a cool decorative chessboard. You can't play it though, not that I even know how. If you place food on an item frame below a pressure plate, looks like it's being served on a dinner plate. Most people make castle gates, they're called portcullises by the way. Most people make portcullises with fences or walls, but the lecterns make a perfect and super unique version instead. Plain block walls can look boring, so try adding extra blocks of similar colors for more texture. This coupled with glass panes placed like this can make a room much more interesting. You could also just use wall blocks as they're literally made for building walls. You can even mix a type of wall round for extra variety. This also works for adding texture to outside walls. And finally, finally, might be a good use for the brick block. People have been using cobwebs for chimney smoke since the dawn of time, so instead you can use coral fans to create a similar but more interesting effect. Alternatively, you could use a campfire to make actual animated smoke to bring a little bit of life to your builds. But my favorite use for campfires is to place them under the floor in any of my spookier builds, lake, a cave, or a graveyard. The smoke will rise up and make fog that's mysterious and, honestly, a little claustrophobic! And starting with a melon golem? Yeah, that's right. A brother to the snowman, this weirdly creepy guy could only be found in Minecraft Earth. He uses melon seeds to fight off enemies instead of snowballs, which only do half a heart of damage, but hey, that's better than what these silly snowmen can do. They can't even do basic math. Yeah, I can! What's five times five? Um... Three! Wrong. But even crazier is the Love Golem. Oh, isn't he cute? The brother to the Iron Golem, these guys spawn in villages just like their steel-clad brothers. But we're all about peace and love, man. They were totally passive, even to zombies attacking their villager friends. I wonder why that could have been. The Love Golem was added in the Love and Hugs update, where Mojang blessed us with even more wholesome new mobs. Check out the Pink Wither. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything goofier? Oh, you have? Oh, my bad. Instead of the dark and deadly damage the normal weather would deal to your world, this guy spreads grass and flowers everywhere, just like bone meal. And what about the smiling creeper? There's not much to talk about here. But at least they're happy. Wait, wait, don't hurt me! Don't hurt me! Oh, puppies. Cute. Chickens are one of my favorite animals in Minecraft, but I sometimes wish they could do more than just that. That's why the diamond chicken was the best. I mean, they were bright blue, and instead of eggs laid diamonds. Now that's more like it. <laughs> Some mods even add these back, but with stone, iron, and gold chickens too, this is way better than mining. Although the gold does smell a bit funny. Oh, I think this might be poo. Most people think Alpha was the first version of Minecraft, but something called InDev was actually earlier than that. This super basic version of the game feels a bit like a fever dream, especially when you see one of these things skipping past you. This, apparently, is a human, though I'm not sure their heads are supposed to move like that. I don't think it's healthy. Truly, the stuff of nightmares. Well, if you think that's crazy, wait until you see the strangest mobs in Minecraft. That award goes to these Funko Pop looking things. Seriously, what on earth am I looking at? Their names were Rana, Beast Boy and Steve, and they didn't even have animations. They just glided motionless around the world like some creepy ghost from the future. Rana looked straight out of a Pokemon game. She's pretty cool. Want an easy way to find Netherite? Try this out. All you need is a fire resistance potion, a few blocks, and a grindstone. After jumping into the lava, swim upwards to see through the entire thing. And ta-da! Enjoy your ban. If you stack minecarts on a singular rail, you can create a nuclear bomb! The minecarts will glitch out and move on their own. Try getting rid of the rails? Well, the minecarts don't care. In fact, it'll keep on going and blow up an entire village if it wants. What a rebel. While night vision is usually very useful, if you splash yourself with a night vision potion in the end, everything will instantly turn pink. Thanks, guys. That helped a lot. Well done. The Minecraft soundtrack changes depending on what time of day it is, meaning if you want a certain soundtrack to play, just use the command and change it back to the time of day you remember it playing at. Oh man, this track is so beautiful. <laughs> Who said it today? Who? Huh? I know karate! Because soul sand isn't a full block, you can't really place falling blocks on top of it. Or at least without having your blocks turn into fragile block entities. If you've ever created a staircase, you'd realize how annoying it is to have to go up and down and back up again. Who invented stairs? I will fight you! But there's a way out of the never-ending pain. Because if you place a torch on the block you're using, you can place a block on the side. And if you keep recycling your torches, you'll soon enough have a really 
long staircase. Just don't look at it from the side. Which huts have the ability to spawn, you know, witches. But also, each time one is generated, a black cat will also spawn inside. They do have a tendency to walk off, but this is actually one of only two ways to find this sleek variant of Kitty. The only other way is wait until a full moon and venture out into a village, where each cat has a 50% chance of spawning as this magical black version. Have you ever run out of gold for powered rails because you never collect it when you're caving? Don't worry, so has literally everybody else that plays this game, but that means there's a solution. Putting a saddled pig in the minecart makes it go much faster on iron rails. It's kind of weird because you have to press the backwards key to move forwards, but it works just fine otherwise. Piglins are primal, tribal creatures and do everything together as a group. Most people know they hunt down hoglins together, but you probably didn't know that there's a small chance that they'll dance together after taking one out. In Bedrock Edition, if you name a boat in an anvil, it'll actually show up as a name tag above. Cool, right? I bet Java Edition has an equally cool mechanic. Oh, it doesn't show up. And it's gone completely. Friends can be very trusting, leaving themselves AFK in your world. You could play this pretty unknown trick. Set down a composter and fill it up, leaving just three pixels of space. Then push them in and close the door. They'll actually be trapped and can only escape by breaking the whole thing. If your friend does carpet, a wicked trick is to put magma blocks on the floor and cover it with matching carpet. Watch for your friend to come home and watch as they hop around, confused, as they take damage from their beloved carpet. Minecraft players all over the world use this incredibly slow method of getting around. People love using bubble columns to zip up to some high tower, but getting down, they use another water shaft. Why waste the time when you can make a shaft, leave it empty, and just have a block of snow or water at the bottom to break your fall? Using shears to collect leaves? Big mistake! You could instead use a hoe, as more modern updates of the game have improved the hoe. And with enchantments like Fortune, you can get way more items, way faster. Path blocks, they look great in a lot of spaces, but they're slightly shorter than the average block. If there's any empty space next to a path block, even if another block is on top trying to hide it, the gap will still be there. Look at it, you can see right through that. Piston door lag! It's a big mistake that happens all the time. Pistons pushing blocks out of the way looks all fancy, but takes precious time when you're trying to get through. Put the pressure plate a few blocks back so you don't smash your face on an automatic door or secret entrance. Everyone knows that you can't stack different types of slabs on top of each other. Apparently, if you go to the world border and make a setup like this, you can use a piston and yep, it makes a really cursed looking block. This one's true. Mangrove trees are super cool, especially because they're the only tree that can be grown underwater, right? Well, the propagule is the only thing that can actually be placed down here and works perfectly. Saplings, however, get broken almost immediately. Almost immediately. If you're quick enough, you can actually grow trees down here. This definitely doesn't feel right, but hey, the game's a game. This one says that if you spawn a cat in a witch hut, it'll always be black. I've spawned about 50 of these things in here and they're all black, so I'll say that's confirmed. And if red isn't your favorite color, Harming potions are super useful for taking out those dreaded mobs or enemies. But when it comes to zombies, these potions actually heal them. I suppose they're dead anyway. So if you want to kill a zombie, throw a healing potion at them to damage them instead. Nice attention to detail, Mojang. Turns out locking is easier than you think. As you can add a glass pane to a map to lock it, meaning it won't update if anything changes. This can be great for documenting the progress of your base over time, or creating a permanent design of an upside down T. If you bring bottles with you to the end fight, you can actually pick up the purple particles the dragon shoots at you. These are called potions of dragon's breath and can be used to craft tipped arrows or lingering potions. I just wish you'd brush first. This secret ender pearl technique lets you phase through walls and can even get through the roof of the nether. Climb a ladder up to the bedrock ceiling, pearl into the bedrock and keep going forward! You'll phase through the top. In Minecraft, there's a secret world called Debug World. To find it, you have to press shift and click on the world type button. Press it enough and you'll find Debug World, which is a fast void filled with every single asset in the game. This sneaky little trick lets you copy a structure you've made and paste it wherever you like. Create a grand statue and fill your friend's world with your monstrous art. Ward off hoglins with just a funny little mushroom. These hulking pig beasts are terribly afraid of the warped fungus. No idea why, but at least it keeps them away from my pet strider. This portal makes no sense! It's a portal spawned in only one seed so far, and for some reason the end portal is totally glitched. It generated with six eyes already in, and somehow created a portal that only covers six blocks. Slimes are the only mob you can kill with 
with just a single punch, but the bigger versions are a little stronger. Luckily, slimes have terrible pathfinding and won't avoid things like lava, cactus, or big holes like this, making them easier to trap than any other mob. Sea turtles might have the most enemies in the game. Not only do all types of zombies try to break their eggs, but skeletons, ocelots, wolves, stray cats, and even zoglins will attack baby sea turtles. I don't know what they did to make so many enemies so cute. Somehow bees are even cuter, which is why no mobs in the game try to attack it. However, if they try and pollinate wither roses, they'll take damage just the same as mobs that walk over it. They'll also die after stinging anything that attacks the hive. All types of fish will start to drown after just 15 seconds on land. Weirdly though, they don't even try to get back into the water. They just kind of flop around and wait for it to be over. Dolphins, however, can last over two minutes on land, and if it's raining, they can survive forever. However, dolphins do need air to survive, so if they're underwater for too long, they'll actually start to drown. At least they try to find water. Squids literally just sit there and move like that. And the mites used to have a huge weakness that nobody knows about. Before 1.15, if they stood on salt sand, they'd suffocate and die. This was eventually fixed, so now their only predator is Enderman. So golems aren't exactly the strongest defense your base can have. Their attacks don't even do damage, and they're made even worse by the fact that they can't even survive in warm climates like deserts or in the rain. They also only have two hearts of health. I'll stick to iron golems if I were you. Have you seen this bowl? Looks pretty normal, but it's actually a super rare item. This drop when a turtle is struck by lightning, a super rare event. What's weirder is that this wasn't a glitch or random choice. Someone at Mojang made sure this happens in the game's code, and I have no idea why. However, there's actually an item Mojang doesn't want you to find. This leather tunic with an efficiency one enchantment should be impossible. But because of a crazy glitch, it can be found in some woodland mansions behind a secret wall. Even crazier, the item there used to be a leather helmet. I wonder what it will turn into next. This large fern is weirder than it looks, and with a rarity rate of 0.3%, this one's pretty rare. You actually can't get these in the wild. She has cut large ferns into two regular ferns, so the only place to find whole ones is in a chest in a tiger village. I wonder what else they're hiding. Frogs! Look at them! All cute and tan. Oh, but I want a red green frog! To get them green, you actually have to become their dad. Grab a tap bowl in a bucket, take it to a cool biome, and put them in a pool and watch them grow up green. Oh, and don't let the pool freeze over. My babies! Speaking of rare water creatures, axolotls come in many colors, but one you'll never see in the wild is the legendary blue axolotl. This super rare creature can only be found through breeding, and has a 1 in 1,200 chance of spawning. So you better have plenty of tropical fish to feed them. But how about the rarest ore in the game? Deep Slate Emerald Ore is actually very hard to find, with a 0.15% chance to regenerate. It only appears in mountains and windswept hills, and only at depths that both emeralds and Deep Slate appear. Be sure to mine them with a Silk Touch pick so you can show your friends a super rare find. Axolotls are amazing! But can you trust them? A secret message was found in Minecraft's release notes saying, the axolotls are not what they seem. One can only imagine what sinister secrets those adorable axolotls are hiding. Finding a large diamond vein is great. What's even crazier is a maximum diamond vein. It's a whopping 48 diamonds. This only happens when the max diamond vein in a chunk connects to four other chunks at the same time. Unlike regular skeletons, nether skeletons don't have bows. But if they did, the bow would shoot fire. And there's already plenty of that in the nether already. Talking about mobs, there's tons in Minecraft. But did you know this mob was actually changed into an item? That mob is the humble sign. Yes, originally it was classed as a mob, which could only be spawned by pressing B, and only had a pre-written message on it. Don't try to raid a baby strider! As even if you use a command to tame a baby strider and have a saddle on it, the moment you ride it into lava, you'll catch on fire! The baby is just too small to protect you from it. Did you know that Steve wasn't always called Steve? He actually didn't have a name at first, and they had to scramble to come up with one when they agreed to have him show up in the indie game Super Meat Boy. This special secret about iron could save your home, because it turns out an iron chain is the same resistance against explosions as a full iron block despite being made with way less materials. Put them in your walls and you've got a fortress. You can actually use enchanting tables as a way to catch intruders in your base. Anyone trying to snoop around and steal your items is probably going to be invisible. But the enchanting tables, magical powers actually show you there's someone nearby by opening up and facing straight towards them. Grandma, what are you doing in my house? Oh right. Ah! Every single item in the game has a shape that goes from the bottom left of the item slot to the top right, from tools to fences, name tags, and even amethyst shards. That is, except for the echo shard, which does the exact opposite and faces the other way. I love this feature because it shows that the item really is an echo of the regular items, and could even come from some strange alien world. Ever wondered what causes those creepy cave sounds to play? It's actually not random. It relies on this section of the F3 screen called Moon that increases over time when you're underground and decreases when you're near light. When it gets to 100%, a random cave sound will play, and 
mandatory set back to zero. There are actually four secret paintings hidden in the game files that you can't even get normally in the game. The paintings are earth, wind, fire, and water, and can only be spawned in with this command. Apparently, they were only added in to promote Pocket Edition, but I really hope they get added in fully eventually, as they're so much cooler than this. Tinted Glass is the only glass block that actually drops an item when you break it normally. I guess the Amethyst enchanted it with mystical powers. With all the carpet traps out there, most people are terrified to even step foot on them, which makes them perfect for the most illegal hidden entrance yet. You can jump on turtle eggs through carpets, and it'll break the carpet as well as the egg, sending you straight down to anything you build below. Sea turtles are endangered in real life, by the way, making this one actually illegal. If you place perfectly white maps on sea lanterns or glowstone, you can make a super trippy infinite room. Most people use this to troll their friends, but honestly, I think it makes a super cool house. Just try not to get a headache smacking into the walls. You can use a similar trick to make custom wallpaper for your house. Depending on your dedication, you can make custom blocks, simple patterns, or super ornate drawings rivaled only by glazed terracotta, whatever that's supposed to be. Using a hoe or a shovel on dirt will send a pulse to a hidden observer, letting you create wild hidden bases like the one Mr. Insane made in his world. This does seem like a lot of effort for a single player world though. What are you hiding it from? Hero Brian? Something slightly more practical is this instant base idea that uses nothing but saplings. At the start of your world, put some oak saplings down where you want the walls. Once you're back from mining or looking for food, your house will have literally built itself. Everybody knows that naming a mob dinner bone flips it upside down, but I bet you didn't know there's a second secret name that does the same thing. If you call the mob Grum with two M's instead, it'll do the same thing. This was added at the same time as dinner bone, so I kind of feel bad he didn't get as much attention. Poor Grum. If you're like me, you probably still managed to get lost even with a map, but if you name a banner and place it down at your base, you can right click it with the map, and a marker will pop up showing you exactly where home is. Remember the last time you used a furnace minecart? Yeah, me neither, but there is actually a way to use them that kind of makes them useful, I guess? If you push a furnace minecart into a chess minecart, they'll actually couple together, allowing you to transfer a huge bunch of resources easily without choker boxes. It all completely falls apart the second a corner or hill appears, but hey, they've got the spirit. Honey blocks are so sticky that mobs like villagers can't actually jump off them, meaning you can use them to hold them in place. And if you've spent ages pushing villagers around or using boats to move them, I'm about to blow your mind. You can't bait villagers around with seeds or carrots, but you can get them to follow you simply by having a chat with them. It seems they're so excited to trade with you that they just won't leave you alone, letting you bring them pretty much wherever you want. And if anything was to uh, happen to your villagers, don't use potions of weakness to heal them. Instead, you should use tipped arrows with a crossbow. If you have a high enough piercing level, you can shoot through multiple villagers and then pick the arrow up after allowing you to cure hundreds of villagers with just one arrow. Speaking of bombs... Uh I'm sorry! Did you know that TNT dropped into an end portal doesn't actually explode until you jump in yourself? It even keeps its fuse length, so if you drop it from around 70 blocks up, it'll instantly blow up whoever is unfortunate enough to head through next, along with all the valuable gear they were bringing too. Dripstone works too if you're not feeling that mean, but let's face it, you'd rather blow them up. Another great way to blow someone sky high is with TNT minecarts. Sure, there's all these ways to create nukes with them, but let's face it, you're gonna have to end up cleaning that up. So instead, if someone has a railway down to their mines, just add a couple TNT minecarts at the end. When they run into them and blow up, if anything, you're just helping them mine. Since they were added in the 1.13 update, bubble columns have been the absolute best elevator solution we've had. And conveniently, there's tons of ways to trap them and make your friends' lives just a little bit worse. The easiest is to surround the top in obsidian, so they have to spend ages mining it while underwater to get out. But my personal favorite is to shoot a bunch of tipped arrows in the water that hit anyone coming up. Instant damage or poison and works to give them a real scare. But I prefer to use slowness to create just the tiniest inconvenience for them. One of the simplest ways to really make someone mad in Minecraft is to simply just fill up their house with water. It takes you two minutes to place a bunch of water or ice on their roof, but will take them forever to place and break blocks everywhere to get rid of it all. If you want to be really evil, you can bone meal a bunch of kelp to make all of the water source blocks. So without sponges, they're going to be there for years. If you want to take your friend out in a super creative way, try using this super 
super unique trick. When there's enough entities in a small place, it'll start dealing damage to them. That means if you can get your friend to fall into a hole with a bunch of minecarts, it'll start damaging them automatically. This quick hack lets you harvest an entire field in an instant. Plants need a certain light level. So if you have a redstone lantern to provide that, then switch it off when it's time to harvest, all the veg will burst out at once, ready to be picked up or collected in hoppers under the soil. This hack is a fresh twist on a classic. Paintings can be used to hide entrances, but that can be too obvious. Instead, hide a pressure plate behind it that activates when you drop an item through the painting, activating whatever secret mechanism you want to set up. Sometimes smart hacks use the weirdest items, like this stairway of dripstone and smaller and smaller cake slices. Use a horse which can travel over a single block height without jumping, and the weird hitboxes of the items will send you rocketing up the stairway at high speeds. Side of creatures jumping fences? Try this hack where you set down a bunch of trap doors and flip them up. They'll act as fences that the AI just can't understand and won't be able to escape from. Here's Johnny, the murderous vindicator, and here he is in this weird hack, killing these animals for our food. See, when you tag a vindicator with the name Johnny, he will kill anything in sight. And if you trap him in a mob farm, the animals he kills drop their loot into the chest without you having to lift a finger. There was also a mob called the Great Hunger, which is a pretty powerful name for a mob that looks like this. He's just a little lizard guy, and he didn't even attack you. Instead, it was supposed to be able to add or remove enchantments to your items. But as we know, the grindstone ended up doing that instead. Poor thing. Imagine being replaced by literally just a rock. And then more recently, there was a copper golem. Hey! Give me back my job! <clears throat> Anyway. And then more recently, there was a copper golem. Smaller and less threatening than its iron brothers, but not without its uses. If it was added, it would have come with copper buttons and would have loved to press them, allowing for all sorts of automatic machines and contraptions. And contraptions. Stay away from me, Rock. I'm warning you. Turns out there's actually a bunch more golems that Mojang never ended up adding. First off, there's the furnace golem from Minecraft Earth. They're another variant of the classic iron golem, but have a burning desire to take out any mob using their fiery attacks. Along Inside its normal melee attack, they were even able to light the ground around their enemy on fire, which caused real trouble for the village they were protecting. Then there's the Squall Golem. These guys behave eerily similar to the Warden. In dungeons, they start off totally still on the ground, until a nearby resonance crystal is activated. This is when they power up and quickly charge towards you, attacking you with quick, fast-paced attacks like a supercharged Iron Golem. They can even cause huge shockwaves that send you flying through the air. And we can't forget the infamous Redstone Monster monstrosity, a gigantic golem boss that's even immune to lava. It's a huge, hulking, mechanical piece of rock covered in redstone patches with three glowing eyes and two massive horns on its head. It has tons of powerful attacks, including a fireball attack where it shoots projectiles that deal huge damage, a slam attack where it hits the ground and knocks you back like a TNT blast, and a summon attack where 12 redstone cubes leap from the ground and attack you. If you ask me, this seems way more fun than the Ender Dragon fight. I'm about to start playing dungeons instead. Sayonara, Minecraft. And the best part is, if you ever manage to actually take out this crazy strong boss, which I certainly couldn't, it's not even over. Later on in the game, you can come across the Mooshroom monstrosity, which appears to be the body of an ancient redstone monstrosity somehow brought back to life by mushroom spores. Its attacks aren't quite as crazy though. It just like spawns cows sometimes. <laughs> Never mind, it's quite powerful too! Woodland Mansions are one of the rarest and coolest structures in the game, and this one is even cooler. Not only did this mansion spawn in the middle of a swamp, but it's also right next to this crazy dripstone sinkhole. And if that wasn't cool enough, these waterfalls can even spawn axolotls. Talk about luxury. If you like caves and caverns, you'll love this next seed. Imagine loading up a new Minecraft world to play on, and suddenly you spawn even you're placed right in the middle of this huge open cavern with near infinite dripstone caves to explore. There's even an ancient city deep inside if you're feeling courageous. But you don't have to go too far to make use of this giant cave. Just follow this waterfall down and you'll end up right next to one, two, three, four, five, six exposed diamonds. Good luck mining them though. And you can't craft a pickaxe with this whole cave system being underneath a giant desert with no trees in sight for miles. But thankfully, I have creative mode. Wait, ah! If giant caves and lava pools aren't your style, try out this seed that has to have one of the prettiest spawn points in the entire game. In the middle of this ring of cold, snow-tipped mountains lies a quiet little village, complete with farms, cats, and baby donkeys. Just next to it, there's even a gorgeous flower forest, as well as pigs, chickens, and caves with iron in them, all contained within this beautiful scenery. But even that doesn't compare to this village, which rests on a grassy plain covered in flowers, right above this huge exposed lush cave. 
cave. There's even a ruined portal and a bunch of food nearby to get you started in this world. It doesn't get better than this. Isn't that right, Mr. Villager? No, why would you kill an innocent dog? That's just cruel. Trap doors and chains make perfect hanging chairs for garden or parks. And flower pots attached to chains look like hanging plants. But sometimes the chains that we have in the game just don't look like enough to hold up our big builds. So instead, try linking a bunch of grindstones like this. That looks much more stable. Pathways are super important for tying a village together. So instead of just using gravel and cobblestone, try using andesite and even dead coral blocks for extra variety and texture. The same goes for floors. Mud mixed with brown mushrooms and terracotta makes an awesome floor for muddy farms. Barrels and spruce planks look great for a creaky attic floor. And beehives are a super interesting block to use for the floor of a cute little cottage you've built. You can also try using blast furnaces, cartography tables, and a bunch of other blocks to make unique and interesting floor designs. Be creative with it. Dripstone makes an awesome trunk for a palm tree. And you can even use conduits to add coconuts. At least if you squint. Think candles are just another light source? Here's a bunch of reasons why you're wrong. Firstly, you can make a pond plant called a cat tail by placing a green candle on a glass pane. An end rod plus a candle, redstone torch, or iron bar makes a perfect sword replica. It's always annoyed me that lanterns can't float, but with the help of candles, they can! Damn, it kinda looks like Hogwarts in here. Red candles look suspiciously like tiny sticks of dynamite that you can mix with TNT for more detail in your cave builds. Cacti in real life often have pretty pink flowers on top. And you guessed it, pink candles perfectly replicate this. Building a computer on your computer is a classic for Minecraft. So when you've set up your painting and pressure plates, try using a candle in an item frame instead of a button as your mouse. It looks scarily accurate. And finally, gray candles and skeleton skulls on a stone wall make a really cool design. A waterlogged leaf block on top of a fence, or walls look suspiciously like a globe. But Marlo, the earth isn't square! Oh, actually. Pow! See? Think building like a pro is difficult? Think again and watch this. If you're building walls like this, you're doing it all wrong. Instead, grab some blocks that are similar and scatter them around a bit. You can new stairs to add extra depth and even add patterns in front to make it extra interesting. And just like that, you're leveling up your building super easily. The same goes for floors, both inside and out. Spending a couple minutes making a block palette can add tons of detail, like adding beehives in with oak planks, brown mushrooms in with mud, and moss in with grass outside. There's tons of ways to make super-sized versions of different foods in Minecraft. Obviously, you can use a sea pickle for melon or pumpkin stem, but you can also put a mangrove popper gill on top of a mangrove log for a bulbous beetroot, a warped vine on some Honeycomb for peculiar pineapple, and a sea pickle on a nether wart block for a tomato. For extra farm decoration, you can add barrels full of berries by placing coral blocks above water surrounded by trapdoors. This works with raw iron to make potato barrels, and you can even try making a larger version with crimson planks below as a grape stomping barrel outside a vineyard. Looms are one of the weirdest looking blocks in the game, but you can actually use them to make empty bookshelves, escalators, air conditioning units outside buildings, and cool looking roofs for your house. And if it's a detailed bookshelf you're going for, one point 20 added this secret way to put a 3D book model on a shelf. Just add an armor stand under the block you want like this, and place a leather helmet with a white coast armor trim applied. Push a block down from above and it'll look exactly like a spare book left out on the table. But sometimes players aren't just trying to steal your loot, they're out for blood, so an alarm system just won't cut it. To truly fortify your base, try building your base using stairs placed like this. If you fill them with water, it won't spill everywhere, and it makes your entire base completely resistant to TNT, stopping raiders and creepers in their tracks. And and if you want to take this to the next level, try placing a line of observers below the outside blocks hooked up to TNT. These will trigger as soon as the stairs are broken, blowing the raiders up instantly while your base sits there totally unharmed. Remember back in the old days of the game when the best traps just involved placing gravel above signs? Well, these go 1,000 times better with scaffolding. Now, instead of spending ages placing signs perfectly, you can just place a layer of scaffolding hooked up to a piston, stick some carpets above it, and as soon as it's triggered, it'll plunge any players and their loot directly into this pit of lava. The most the difficult part of creating a secret base is trying to hide the entrance, so try this idea out. Build a regular wheat or potato farm above wherever you want your base to be. Then break a block behind the crop like this and hide a button in there. Not only is this almost impossible to see, but nobody will ever suspect this lovely little farm being the place you hide all your valuable gear. Everyone knows bedrock is a completely unbreakable block, and in most Minecraft servers, breaking bedrock will get you banned. However, there's a catch. As in the nether, if you climb a ladder placed on the very top block of bedrock and throw an 
ender pearl like this, you teleport straight through the ceiling, putting you on top of the nether. But that's not all, as it's actually possible to break bedrock as well. All it takes is this simple TNT machine. Hop under the trap door, flick the lever, and right click as fast as you can with a piston in your hand. If you click fast enough, the bedrock below the piston will glitch out and disappear. Just like my dad when I was a child. Then he came back and ran away again. But a more obvious way to get banned is to hack. Auto clickers are the most common hack, letting you click super fast without doing anything. This lets you place blocks super fast, bridge in crazy ways, or absolutely dominate in 1.8 PvP. But if you're really trying to get banned, fly hacks are the way to go. And yes, they do exactly what you think, allowing you to fly anywhere you want in survival mode. For obvious reasons, almost no servers allow this, making it one of the best ways to get banned. But if you want to go out with a bang, you should try lava casting. If you go on to 2B2T, a server with no rules, you'll see these everywhere. Using lava and water, people build these huge lava casts to scar the landscape of servers. They're super annoying to get rid of, but really easy to build. Start by building a staircase straight up into the sky, as high as you possibly can. Then, it's as simple as placing a lava bucket at the top, waiting, then placing water above, and ta-da! Now all your friends hate you. Well, more so than before, if that's possible. Ever wanted to get overpowered on an SMP so you can kill everyone? Because everyone knows the best way to get banned is to start wars and kill people. Well, there's a special trick with villagers that lets you get rich. Gather a whole bunch of villagers together and simply let a zombie loose on them. It might sound dumb, but trust me, once they've been turned into zombie villagers, cure them with weakness potions and golden apples. This basically makes you their daddy, and they'll give you a nice discount on all trades. Then you can repeat this until all their trades cost just one emerald. So if someone asks how you've got mending on literally everything, don't tell them the secret. A real dirty trick only works if your friend puts down signs. Be a little mischievous by moving the signs around and swapping them about. They'll get lost in no time. In a snowy area, try this bounty castle trick. Build a castle with a spot where you need to drop down. Cover the lower area with slime blocks. Cover that with snow. And when your friend drops down onto it, they'll bounce wildly out of control into whatever hazard you want. This trick is simple and classic. Chests don't open when there's a block above them. So put some obsidian on top and watch your friends slowly chip away just so they can access their tools. This next trick requires your very own pet zombie. Put a name tag on them. Hide them under your friend's bed and watch as a game and let them sleep because enemies are too close by. All my life, I've made this huge enchanting setup with all these bookshelves. But apparently you only need 15 bookshelves in total, meaning this tiny setup works just as well as this one. And wait, is that actually true? My life is a lie. There are three different types of overworld frog, warm, cold, and temperate. But supposedly there's a four secret frog you can only get in the end. If you take two frogs and lead them to the stronghold, send them through the portal and feed them slime balls, the tadpoles will grow into super frogs. Yeah, I just made that up. They're just normal. Myth busted. This myth says you can shoot fire arrows to the bottom of a lava cauldron, but there's no way that's true. Can you even shoot below them at all? Huh, well, I guess it is true. How did I know that? Am I stupid or something? But as it turns out, Mojang might want to brush past some older Minecraft snapshots too. As in an old snapshot, you could actually grow furnaces? By using a command to spawn a pumpkin with an impossible growth phase, a furnace would grow out of the ground underneath it. Shulkers can be super annoying when they hit you with their levitation balls. Trust me, I know. But these balls can actually hit other mobs as well, causing them to fly high into the sky. Who knew their balls were so powerful? Not me. Uh, definitely not me. Everyone knows that if you name a sheep Jeb, it will turn rainbow. But most people don't know is that you can actually name a rabbit Toast to unlock TOAST! Okay, not really, but it does have a secret texture. It's a reference to a developer's old pet. And although it's not exactly rainbow, at least this guy has meaning, it's common knowledge that dispensers can't place blocks. But did you know that dispensers are actually able to place blocks if it means they can summon a golem or the weather? Dispensing a carved pumpkin on top of two snow blocks will create a snow golem, just as if you place the block there. They're a pretty cool way to win a bet and scam your friends out of their hand-earned diamonds. Oh, just do it for fun. But come on, who does that? A major mistake when making an enchantment table is forgetting to bring the right items. Make sure any lapis or books are nearby in chests so you don't have to remember at all. Speaking of storage, what on earth is this? Nothing is sorted, it's all just thrown together any which way. Set aside different chests to hold different things. Want tools? Make a tool chest so you know where all your tools are. In fact, stop using chests entirely. They're old and dumb and stupid. Well, alright, they look okay. But barrels carry the same amount. Cost 
less to make and can actually be opened even when another block is on top of it. Don't panic! Really, don't panic when a creeper is coming or TNT is ready to explode. Just put some blocks down in front of you and you'll take way less damage. Minecarts can fit almost any mob, including sniffers, ravagers, and even guests. That's a hell of a visitor when you send it down the rails to your friend's home base. Ever feel like a zombie horde is never ending? That's because it might be. Anytime you hit a zombie, it will look around and try 50 times to spawn a new zombie. It only has up to a 10% chance to succeed, though. Unless it's a leader! Then it goes up to a 75% chance of spawning the horde. Be careful where you put your beehives. If it's too close to the ocean, any bee that strays over the water can very quickly get disoriented and will eventually fall in and drown. People have lost entire bee colonies this way, so stay safe. There's a crazy looting glitch that lets you get the extra rewards of the looting enchantment even when the tool you're using isn't enchanted. If you have a saw with looting in your main hand, a regular bow in the other, enemies killed with the bow will give extra items. Everyone knows cats always land on their feet, but did you know that in Minecraft they also take no damage from a fall? This is based on cats' real-world ability to survive crazy falls. Some have even fallen out of a plane without a parachute and lived to tell the tale. Go beyond the end of the world with this command. It's a secret teleport destination that will put you on the other side of the world border. But be careful because the moment you pass that border, you'll be taking real damage. Snow golems aren't the only mob that doesn't like the rain though. Pandas are actually terrified of thunderstorms and they don't just take damage in the rain. They hide their face and whimper so they're actually scared. Also, did you know pandas eat cake? That's not a weakness or anything. I just thought it was cool. Ah, no! Ocelots seem more adapted to the tough jungle environment as they've learned to avoid full damage and to hunt chickens for food. However, they are still terrified of humans and run away faster than almost any mob in the game. It's worth it if you can get an ocelot or cat to stick around though as they're actually super good at keeping away phantoms. In fact, a phantom won't come within 16 blocks of a cat at all. But if you want to avoid phantoms altogether, just make sure you get a good night's rest. Taming ocelots removes this weakness, just the same as taming a wolf removes theirs. And this one is the strangest so far. For some reason, wolves are super scared of llamas and will run away the seconds they get anywhere near them. I wonder why they hate them so much. Tamed wolves, however, are super chill with llamas until their human decides otherwise. But this is the same with every other mob in the game, except for creepers. So I guess this makes them weak to creepers? The only other thing dogs have to worry about is me! <laughs> Despite being possibly the most peaceful mob in the game, sheep have their own enemies too. Wild wolves will attack any nearby sheep they can find. They don't even fight back the poor things. But if that doesn't impress your friends, blast them with these rare screaming goat horns. Goats will round players or other mobs. And if they miss and hit a tree, their horns can break off and be used as musical instruments. Horns from screaming goats are extra rare and can't be found any other way. This rare portal is actually a block that you can pick up and drop wherever you want. You need a silk touch and a lot of luck. But if you use this machine to push you as you mine this flower, you could end up mining the actual portal itself. Drop it in the end and you can teleport straight back home, along with anything else that touches the portal. Lightning striking the same place twice is almost impossible. But with some of the rarest items in the game, particularly the trident, you can make this infinite lightning machine where every bounce makes another strike for a crazy light show. Ever try to catch a bubble? This super rare block is actually mined straight out of the water. Using this machine that dispenses water as you mine, pushing the bubbles into the way of your silk touch pickaxe, you can get these bubbles as a block. You can even place them on dry land. This crazy glitch can be used for even more impossible blocks, like this block of water. If you try to mine the underwater plants with your silk touch pickaxe, you can end up with this. It looks like a pain, and when you set it down, it spills out like a bucket of water. Oh god, my head! Just kidding. This rare item is hard to get, but super fun. You need a creeper to get charged by lightning. Then, if they explode and kill other mobs around it, the mobs drop their heads as items. Wear the head and it will take a lot longer for the mobs to even notice you. The villagers are hiding a secret. They're actually super fast. Don't believe me. Well, it only happens during nightfall when they're under attack. Their top speed is actually faster than a player sprinting. I don't know you're saying Bolt was white. Mojang put a secret that's hiding in plain sight. See? This end crystal actually has a secret message written on it. It's the word Mojang. It's a fact that game updates can reverse soul changes, but in early Minecraft development, this happened a lot. At one point, they stopped leaves disappearing when the trees were cut down, then changed it back to disappear, then stopped it again, and then again changed it to disappear. A cool secret your friends won't know is that while witches can fight each other, they might never win. Their healing potion is more than their damage, so you can put them in a glass box and set them up as a permanent display. This may look like a magical optical illusion, but it's 
is actually just a bunch of stairs and slabs placed in this special way. You can place coral fans on trap doors like this to make colorful lily pads. Lanterns can also be placed below lily pads to make them glow at night. And you can finish up your pond by placing hanging roots below stained glass to add jellyfish. If you want to show off how rich you are, how about building a huge quartz grand piano? If you place dragon heads on armor stands below some stairs, the ears will pop out and look like keys. You can make rope bridges by building up fences and then attaching leads to them. Oh, uh, don't worry about him. This also works to make balloons. Yay! Ladders can be placed on trap doors to make extra thin ladders that don't take up much room. And if you're really clever, you can use this to make double-sided ladders by using a layout like this. Waterlogged blocks completely break the game. Lily pads can be placed on any block that's waterlogged, creating illegal-looking setups like this. But you can make it look even weirder by placing sugar cane next to the lily pads. Another build hack is this weird new flower. Because this thing is two blocks tall when it's fully grown, you can put string above it to keep it at its third stage and use it to look like a weird overgrown potato in your farms. A lot of the time, the builds you make look like they've been thrown into the world randomly and look super out of place. To fix this, try making shadows by placing slightly darker blocks near overhangs or edges. You can even add mossy blocks around trees to act as fallen leaves. The inside of a mangrove log looks suspiciously like a nice piece of juicy meat. <clears throat> Moving on. Using some lightning rods, armor stands, and a campfire, you can make a super tasty looking hog roast. And if you think this flame is too big, you can place an armor stand and lava underneath for a much tamer flame. If you've ever tried to use crops like wheat as decoration, you've probably run into this problem. However, this illegal build hack will fix that. Water can actually hydrate dirt across thin air, letting you make things like these garden pots without visible water. Try using an upside down lightning rod with a candle placed on top to make a weirdly tall torch. It won't be quite as bright, but hey, you can stand on the edge of the rod for some reason. Everyone loves a good explosion, so here's a way to make a totally invisible and instant landmine. Just place a bunch of TNT minecarts on some powered rails like this and hook them up to a skulk sensor right next to them. Sneak away and you've got the best hidden way to protect your house. Isn't it so great? Ah! My house! But if you want a slightly less destructive method of protection, it's time to hire some soldiers. Bees will actually stay aggravated permanently, meaning if you trap a bunch below the floor in your base and rig them up to release when any intruders enter, they'll swarm them instantly and even chase them down for miles. Let's be honest though, you don't want anyone in your base at all. So it's time to up the security. With just a couple chains and walls, you can create a cool looking fence. But add some magma blocks covered in moss below and it will actually turn into an electrified laser fence. It works too. If you're standing on the magma, you can't actually break the chain before you die. And if you're super rich, try building this design with iron bars, cobwebs, and magic potion dispensers below the ground. If you rig this tripwire up to shoot damage potions, it'll really send a message to robbers. And it's a cool piece of decoration too. A great way to protect your base from both mobs and players is to hide puffer fish underground around your base. Moss carpets are a super easy way to sneak them into your decoration. And water logging even allows you to hide them in bushes and trees. Ow! Oh god, I'm getting flashbacks! If you're feeling really mean though, the best way to deal with thieves isn't to kill them, but trap them permanently. Using a simple piston trap, you can force a player into a bubble elevator like this surrounded in obsidian. Due to the bubbles pushing them around, it'll be almost impossible to mine it even with a pickaxe. What's the most evil thing you can possibly do in Minecraft? Griefing? Duplicating? Even camping someone's spawn? I don't think it's any of these. The worst thing you can do is killing someone's pet, of course. People love their little friends, and you just know someone's gonna run straight to an admin if you hurt them. That's why you gotta do it invisible. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> Oh, crap. Now, nobody likes someone who swears all the time, so you gotta use this to your advantage. If you're really looking to get banned quickly off a server or even Minecraft itself, there's a whole lot of words that can achieve this very, very quickly. Though I probably shouldn't say them in this video. F Getting banned in Minecraft is one thing, but what about something that can actually get you sent to jail? Now that's more like it. We talked about lag earlier, but there's actually a way to completely stop someone using their internet called a DDoS attack. If somebody gets your IP address, they can overload your router and completely stop it working. If anyone catches you doing this, you'll instantly get banned from any server and even have the police called on you. Oh, crap. It wasn't me! It was the dog! Minecraft skins are a perfect canvas to express your creativity. From a 
a turd to Michael Jackson, skin show to others who we are. But this, this is the opposite of beautiful. Oh my god, what is that? These kinds of skins are the reason most servers and even Minecraft itself bans any form of inappropriate skin. From curse words written across you to rather flattering depictions of other things, if you want to get banned, you know what to do. And if you want something to match your new skin, we can't forget inappropriate buildings in SMPs, faction servers, and skyblock servers, you're able to create whatever you want, giving us the perfect opportunity to shape our house however we want. Ah, that's more like it. Ever wanted a girlfriend? Well, good luck, because e-daters are running rampant on Minecraft these days, and a lot of servers think that they need to be stopped, banning dating in Minecraft. So if you're really looking for a quick ban, why don't you just come and kiss me? I mean, get a room, guys! Seriously. Just a glance of a creeper in the corner of your eye is enough to send shivers down any Minecraft spine. But when it looks like this, suddenly they're not scary. This is the nerd creeper. Another April Fool's mob, but one I really wish stayed longer. They were exactly the same as regular creepers, but when you killed them, they dropped this weird glitchy 3D item instead of gunpowder. This didn't do much at all, but if you ate it, it displayed an image of Minecraft developers. Nerd creepers never spawned naturally. But if you typed NERD in chat, one would appear right in front of you. Wait, no, that's too close! Did you know there are mobs you can only spawn in with cheats? The biggest of these has to be the giant, clocking in at 12 blocks tall. These things dwarf most people's mansions. If you spawn them in now, they don't do anything. But back in the 1.7 update, these things could run round and deal damage to you. 13 hearts to be precise, and that's on easy mode. What's even crazier is that the code says these things technically can still spawn. They just require impossible conditions, like having bright and dark light at the same time. So, little Timmy, that's why you shouldn't be scared of the dark. Oh my goodness! If you're pro, you'll know all about skeleton horses, which are a super rare and powerful type of horse. But alongside these, there's actually an unused zombie horse mob in the game too. They can be summoned with commands just the same as giants, but unlike their undead brothers, they actually move without being tamed, and they're pretty cool too. You can ride them just the same as normal horses, and they even regenerate generate health over time. They're so OP that harming potions actually heal them. This means they're the only totally passive undead mob in the game. Everyone loves bunnies. They're cute, fluffy, and ah, painful. This is the killer bunny. And you've got to be wary of this one. It's a pure white rabbit with evil intentions. If you get hit within 16 blocks of one, it'll lock on and lunge straight at you, dealing four hearts of damage. And if these bunnies can't find a player, they'll search for foxes and wolves to attack instead. Thankfully, these guys aren't naturally spawning and only work with commands. Art imitates life, I suppose. But apparently, it's not just players that can spawn floating above the water, because this seed has a woodland mansion doing exactly the same thing. This tiny island next to it is the only piece of land for miles around, and the F3 screen says it's still part of the ocean biome. The wildest part of this is that the game says this mansion actually spawned at the coordinates 0, 0, right in the center of the map. And these coordinates aren't even a dark oak forest. If I had to guess, the generation glitched out and thought there was just one block in a dark oak biome, but that would be crazy lucky. But if a floating mansion is too boring for you, how about a mansion buried underground? And if that's still not enough, why not put a village on top of it too? This seed is truly one in a million. There's houses inside roofs, roofs inside houses, and even a house just hanging out on its own in the middle of the mansion. But my favorite part is to be these random sprinkles of grass and huge blocks of stone in the roof of the mansion. I wonder what would happen if you started a raid here. Spawning Running right next to a village is great, allowing you to loot up, get food, and set yourself up for the nether. But with this seed, that's not exactly the case. Here, you spawn right next to an abandoned zombie village. Sure, there's a couple of hay bales, but don't try going in any of the houses. Around any corner could be a zombie just waiting to... Ah! Gosh! I should have seen that coming. When you spawn into this seed, you might be tempted to check out the beautiful coral reef in the ocean right next to you. But as soon as you turn around, you'll be met with the truly gigantic Badlands mountain range. This Badlands stretches from sea level to far above the clouds. The rocky parts high up are covered in iron and emeralds, and there's masses of long, winding caves that stretch for miles underneath the huge pile of terracotta and stone up top. And we're not even talking about the crazy, spiky rock formations found all over this area, and the truly massive cliffs that open up to 
reveal caves with mine shafts, lakes, and even an ancient city below. So if you're looking for a seed to explore, this is your best bet. But let's talk about a different kind of seed for a moment. Speedrunning is a crazy way of playing Minecraft where you simply just try and beat the game as fast as possible. And if you want the cheat code, we got you. This current seed spawns you in a village with beds for the dragon, chests with obsidian, a ruined portal giving you everything to light the nether portal in minutes. But once you're in the nether, you don't need to stop for blazes or endermen, because the end portal in the stronghold is one of the one in a trillion glitched ones I mentioned earlier, and lets you enter as soon as you're back in the overworld, making this seed even rarer than one in a trillion. It's literally the best seed in the world. Instead of just moving an AFK player to an obsidian box, how about putting them into a water-filled box with regenerating walls? All you have to do is place lava on the outside of the box, place a conduit to stop them from drowning, and an elder guardian will make sure it takes them literally forever to mine out. I know how to get out! Ah! Poppers literally have a built-in way to prank people. If you hate building huge farms, wait for someone else to do it for you. And place your own hopper beneath the ones that catch all the items. It'll filter you half their items, so you get some free stuff and they won't even notice. 1.20 added this awesome new feature that lets note blocks make mob sounds if you add the right head on top. This means you can set up a random redstone clock below someone's face and drive them insane with mob noises that they'll never be able to track down. One of my favorite ways to set up one of these random random clocks is to add a chicken underground somewhere in a small room with a pressure plate. The chicken will walk around slowly and activate whatever you want it to. I recommend a bell because oh my god they're loud. If you want to be even more annoying and going to sleep with monsters nearby, I think this phrase will still haunt us in 20 years. All you've got to do is bring over a mob, name tag it, and hide it underneath your friend's bed. A creeper is best for this because it's silent and it'll take forever for your friend to find it. And when they do... Honey blocks have a crazy feature barely anybody knows about. They're actually just a little bit smaller than a normal block, meaning you can shoot arrows between them. Thank me later, fortress builders. Dolphins are one of the smartest animals in the world, and it's no different in Minecraft. If you give a dolphin enough fish, it'll actually begin to swim to the nearest underwater chest as thank you for feeding it. Endermen are already one of the most creepy and powerful mobs in the game. They absolutely didn't need another buff to make them even stronger, but they got exactly that. Usually an enderman will just teleport out of the way of an arrow or other projectile. First, if they've got nowhere to teleport to, the arrow will just bounce off like it's nothing. Cheaters. Luckily, there is a way to make Enderman completely powerless. Yeah, sort of. Sure, you can just place water at your feet, but that's old news. If you accidentally trigger an Enderman by looking into its eyes, don't look away. For some reason, Enderman won't move at all as long as you hold eye contact. And what do you do from here? Uh, good question. Moving on. Breaking blocks like clay underwater is so annoying! Sure, there's the old door trick, but that's no fun compared to TNT. But Mello, TNT doesn't work underwater! Wrong! All you need to do is place sand or gravel on top before lighting it, and it works perfectly. It barely even damages you. You can actually do the opposite as well. Placing an anvil on top of TNT before lighting it will stop it from breaking any blocks at all. It doesn't even damage the anvil. And again, you take almost no damage from the blast. Ever wanted to create a nuclear bomb? Well, you're in luck. All you gotta do is place a rail and stack multiple TNT minecarts on top of each other. This glitches the game and creates an insane amount of explosive power. Just don't touch it, or you'll probably end an entire race of villager. When thinking of unbreakable Minecraft blocks, bedrock is probably first to come to mind. You can't break bedrock with lava, TNT, or even a literal nuke. So would it surprise you that all it really takes is snow? In 1.17, if you place a cauldron and fill it up with powdered snow, then place a block above it and click the cauldron, it just disappears. Wow, nice job, Mojang. The wither can't swim, making it impossible to spawn them underwater. However, there's a catch. If you swim to the bottom of the ocean and build a little bunker, you can spawn the wither boss at the bottom of the ocean. And when released, it will kind of just stay in the ocean like a weird fish. So hey, if you want an invincible three-headed fish that does nothing, you know what to do. Did you know you can break Minecraft by predicting exactly where life lightning strikes land? Well, most lightning strikes are spontaneous. If you load specific chunks at the right time, as discovered by a group called the Prototech server, you can 
actually predicts and direct lightning strikes. This is extremely useful, making it really easy for you to farm OP mobs, such as Skeleton Horseman. From there, you can collect all their loot and end up a rich man. You can also just farm your friends, which is another really good option. Feel free to add their dogs to spice things up a little. If you've ever been to a village, you'd know pillagers absolutely hate villagers. I mean, like, Mojang literally coded them to find and murder their babies. But you can actually use this to break Minecraft, as pillagers are programmed to be very dumb. Very. If you put a villager in a minecart and have him circle around on a railroad, a pillager will forever go in circles, never able to reach him. <laughs> Imagine bullying villagers. Losers. Wait! Minecraft seeds are randomly generated, meaning you could find entirely different kinds of structures depending on which world you spawn in. Normally, a good seed starts with spawning near a village or you finding yourself close to a desert temple. However, the best kind of seeds are the ones that absolutely defy all types of Minecraft logic, having weird lava structures like this or a literal glitched ender portal. These seeds completely break and defy every rule of Minecraft. So if you want to break Minecraft, try loading up one of these seeds. They'll give you a good excuse to blow up your friend's base. And their dogs. Don't forget the dogs. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? It was the Minecraft seed! That doesn't even make any sense! Piglin bartering is super overpowered, but it's so slow. Luckily, Bedrock Edition Pros found a way to speed it up by a hundred times. All you need to do is grab a sticky piston and a gold block, and took it up to a super fast clock. Then when you drop the gold, the Piglin will pick a piece of gold up every time the block moves, giving you supercharged trading! Swimming with Dolphin's Grace is even faster than using a boat. The only drawback is that it's quite difficult to breathe down here. However, there is a secret solution that lets you literally breathe underwater. If you punch a mob while swimming, you'll stand up for a split second. When you head to the surface, you'll be able to breathe like you're scuba diving. Another way to breathe underwater is to bring a bucket and simply just spam it against the block in front of you. The water will disappear for a split second at a time, letting you grab all the air you need. Look, everybody knows about the water bucket clutch now. I've been doing it since before Dream was even born. But in the nether, doing this is a little bit harder. For some weird reason though, snow and powder snow doesn't melt here, which means you can clutch with it. And it looks way more stylish than just riding a boat down. How on earth am I supposed to get back up? Well, if you have a second bucket and some leather boots, you can pull her up by placing two blocks of it, picking the lower one up, and repeating. Just make sure not to crouch at any point, especially over lava. I like to call this trick the drip leaf drop. A big drip leaf creates a platform that can hold you up, but it folds soon after. Grow one above a big pit and lead your friend over it. You'll trigger the fold and they'll fall right in. Hey! If your friend is online and you can access a house, they a really weird trick by building an upside down version of their house on top of their regular house. It's a bizarre mind bending monument that will take time to remove if they even want to. If your friend is a pet dog, a real sadistic trick is to replace it with your own. Hide their dog and name your own dog the same name. Then watches your friend struggles, wondering why it won't listen to them anymore. You can even hit your friend and watch as they run screaming from the dog they thought was their best friend. Both rabbits and foxes are also scared of wolves and will be hunted down if they go anywhere near a pack of them. The scariest part is that the wolves don't even eat the meat the animals drop, meaning they only hunt for the fun of it. Now do you understand why I hate them? Oh yeah, and rabbits are also scared of cats and players too. Bats are easily the least dangerous mob in the game. These things are so stupid. In fact, that's actually their weakness. Bats are so dumb that sometimes when they're flying around around a cave, they'll fly straight into a pool of lava. I get why they don't even drop XP now. Silverfish take the term strength in numbers to the next level. On their own, they're harmless, but if you're trapped in a room with 15 of them, it gets a little scarier. However, if you have a weapon strong enough to kill them in one hit, they won't call in support. Pirates are actually a super useful thing to have around as they warn you of nearby enemies and don't get attacked by mobs. They are, however, deathly allergic to cookies, and feeding one to a parrot will kill it instantly. This is actually because in real life, parrots are allergic to chocolate, so uh, <laughs> keep that in mind, I guess. You probably you already know that villagers are super weak to zombies. They don't even try to fight back. However, did you know that they're even more scared of pillagers? In fact, in a raid, villagers will actually start to sweat because they're so scared. Thank God they have a hero like me to protect them. An even deeper secret comes from the creeper head. Use a creeper head in a firework recipe, an explosion will take the shape of a giant creeper's face. But some secrets are so deep, we have to go back in time to get them. Snowy grass was patched out long ago, but if you make a world in the 1.16 version of Minecraft, get an enderman in the nether to pick up a 
snow-covered grass block and put it down, then take the map from the game files into a new world in the current version of Minecraft, that block will still be there. Don't mind it though, or it'll be gone forever. In the Woodland Mansion, there is an item you were never meant to see in survival. In Bedrock Edition Beta 1.16.0.57, a secret lava room in the Woodland Mansion would normally hide the diamond block, but this version would glitch out, showing the secret barrier block instead. So many rare finds are in old updates, including the most powerful of all. Load Minecraft Snapshot 22W13 one block at a time, and you will find an insane change. The Endermen spawn with random items in their hands, including the rarest of them all, a command block in a minecart. This only spawns 0.0001% of the time, and for good reason. If you can get the rare command block out and use it, you can use them to get Endermen to drop the end gateway block that is normally impossible to get in survival. Use this code in the command block, and Endermen will now have the chance to drop this endgame item Mojang never wanted you to have. You can use these fire arrows to light TNT, but what else does this work with? Exit projectiles. Do they work? Oh yeah, they do. Snowballs would just melt, wouldn't they? Nope, that works too. Okay, there's no way the fishing rod works too. It does? That's insane! Oh no. Have you ever been to the cinema and had your eardrums blown out by the super loud noise? Well, legend has it this was actually added to Minecraft. If you find a 2% screaming goat, it has a 1 in 4 chance of dropping the call horn. And when you blow it... I'll say that's confirmed. You can make a door with end rods that mobs can't get through. This one's weird because the end rods are thin enough for us to walk through. So why wouldn't mobs be able to? Oh, huh, I guess it works. That's strange. Maybe they see them as full blocks like they do with trap doors? Grindstones remove the enchants from items, so surely it makes sense for it to do the same for a notch apple, right? Oh, I guess not. Why would you even want to do that? Wait, what if I put an enchantment on it with an anvil and then put it in the grindstone after? There we go. I'll call that one a maybe. Most players beat the Ender Dragon by taking out all the crystals and then hitting it with a sword. But excuse you? I was stream back in the day and not only have I seen his face before he put the mask back on, but even I know that you can skip this process entirely by waiting for the dragon to perch and then using beds to blow it up. Take that, American military! Cactuses are able to destroy items when thrown at them, but they are the only block that can do this. Dropping an anvil on some items from four blocks or higher will instantly destroy those items. Pretty cool. The invisibility potion is great for hiding from your friends or to sneak past mobs. But for some reason, villagers will still look at you, even if you're completely invisible. The same thing happens with enchanting tables. So if you're trying to spy on your friends, make sure a villager don't snitch on you. It's so much fun finding buried treasure, but where is it? I'm at the X. Everyone makes a mistake of just guessing the X exactly is pointing, but you might be off by a few blocks. So to be absolutely sure, look at the coordinates in the chunk selection. The treasure will always spawn at 9-9 for that chunk. It should be straight down. The nether is where mistakes can be deadly. It's very easy to catch fire, and water is appears instantly. Or does it? The big mistake people make is not bringing a cauldron and buckets of water. Even in the nether, water in a cauldron will not disappear. So when you catch fire, put yourself out with this cool trick. A big mistake is to not keep up with what's changed in game updates. In version 1.18, they even changed the way diamonds spawn. It used to be that diamonds mostly showed up between depths 5 to 12, but now you'll find them showing up more and more all the way down to bedrock. A mistake that has taken millions of lives is digging under sand and having it fall on your head. The best way to avoid dying is to put a torch under any falling blocks. Any sand or gravel that falls on the torch breaks instantly. In the 1.6 update of Minecraft, they added horses, and it turns out this was brought in from an unofficial fan mod. Mojang saw Dr. Zark's Mo Creatures mod, and even copied the horse model itself. Wandering traders look great, but what your friends don't know is that you can breed their llamas, and the babies will keep the clothes of their parents. It's a weird little detail, but you can make a whole army of fashionable llama. Mojang love making secret references to other the games, such as when an evoker sees a blue sheep. The evoker casts a unique spell, makes a weird wololo sound, and turns a sheep red. It's a reference to Age of Empires, where monks would convert enemies to their side, chanting wololo and changing their color. A fish out of water bounces and flops, but you can actually get them jumping way higher. On a slime block, they'll gain height, sometimes up to 17 blocks high. The world famous creeper is the face of Minecraft, but they actually have a secret past. They weren't designed. They were an accident! Like my birth. The developers were trying to make pigs, but instead of making them long, they made them extra tall. This created the frightening creature we know today. Did you know that spiders never touch the ground? That's because of how the model is made. Even though it's on the floor, the legs never actually reach the block below it. A secret, dirty little trick you can do is build an end portal above your friend's bed. So when they respawn, they'll instantly teleport to the end and will have to live there until the bed or the portal is broken. Now think about it. If you can remove all the mobs in your world, there's no need to protect your base. So how on earth do you do that? Well, as usual, Lamango has a solution. If you create this 
a super simple warden farm, you can use note blocks to lure dozens of wardens into this prison with a vine inside. Eventually, so many wardens will spawn that it prevents any mob from spawning anywhere in the entire world. However, this is terrifying, and there's a much easier way to get basically the same effect. Simply grab a boat and spend some time looking for a mushroom island. Other than the deep dark, which has other problems, this is the only place mobs won't spawn naturally. And it's the perfect backdrop to build an awesome fantasy base. They can be quite hard to find, but you can always use a seed map if you're feeling devious. If you've got a cramped house like this one and you're trying to figure out where to put the ladder, try placing a line of trap doors like this and putting the ladders on them. Alternatively, if you're uncreative, try using the debug stick to create floating ladders that take up even less space. Now that's ingenuity. Here's a cool way to make an armor stand look like it's holding a sword. Start by placing an end rod with a candle on top, then pushing an armor stand into it from behind. Then put some armor on it and push two blocks down behind it and you have your very own knight in shining armor. And since you're obviously building a sick castle if you make this, you can make awesome ornate carpets using a combination of shulker boxes and glazed terracotta. Hey, hey, I don't want to hear anything about how expensive shulkers are. You own a castle! As long as the colors are similar, it really doesn't matter how you lay out carpet. It'll look cool either way. If you're trying to make a dark, creepy cave, try adding shadowy cracks with signs inside. If you add this character to them, dye it red and add a glow ink sack. It'll create these super scary looking eyes that glow in the darkness. Come on, Grandma, take a look. Ah! Speaking of, nether wall blocks make a fantastic blood substitute. For city builders, try placing a campfire below a loom to simulate a vent. This same technique also works for a barbecue grill. 1.20 already has me hyped. Check out these new bamboo blocks they're giving us. You can use these mosaic blocks to make cool floor patterns. And these new chiseled bookshelves for a new wall design. Maybe mix in other wooden blocks again to make it even more interesting. Sea pickles look kind of like pumpkin stems. And a stripped mangrove log, flower pot, and mangrove proper gill put together makes a really big beetroot for farm decoration. But if that's not enough, try adding kegs made of trap doors with raw iron in for potatoes and coral blocks in for berries and grapes. This works for other things too, like using a respawn anchor and trident instead to make a spooky animated witch's cauldron. Item frames and signs can actually be placed on the same block, letting you double label chess. You can even dye the sign for extra customization. Scaffolding makes a perfect table to put flower pots or other decorations on. Sometimes the only thing your build is missing is just a little bit of detail, and often buttons are the best solution to this. Whether it's dotting them around your roof and walls, or chucking them next to a pond as pebbles, they're perfect for adding a little bit of extra interest. They make great fidget toys too. If you're looking for an extra block or color to add somewhere to your build, the answer is probably in a stripped log. Their textures are super simple, but with mangrove, jungle, acacia, and warped logs, there's tons of different and interesting colors to choose from. Six lecterns placed like this look suspiciously like a coffin that's been broken out of. This pairs perfectly with a gravestone made of soul soil, anvils, and a wither skeleton skull. Everybody wants to have the most diamonds on a server, right? But it can take ages to find them on the ground. Now, of course, there's ways to search caves faster and a way to strip mine 10 diamonds an hour, but screw that. We're trying to get banned. That's where X-ray texture packs come in, completely breaking the game. These texture packs make every block but diamonds invisible, meaning when you look down, you can see exactly where the diamonds are. This is one of the oldest cheats in Minecraft, and almost all servers completely ban it. And remember, if you get caught, say you just got lucky. One of the strangest things in the world of Minecraft accounts is that at one point, you could make accounts with the same name. You could only do this with some really sneaky tricks, but it led to some pretty funny incidents. On Hypixel, the biggest server there is, you could actually teleport if you had both of the accounts with the same name. This meant you could go anywhere you wanted on the map and surprise enemies in PvP games. It totally ruined the game for everyone else. And as you can imagine, the admins don't like this at all. So if you're one of the lucky ones who can do this, use it wisely. Mojang has another big rule about accounts, but this one might be something you guys have done without even knowing. You're actually not allowed to use somebody else's account, the same way Netflix doesn't like you sharing passwords. That's right, even if it's someone in your family, they need their own account. One of the easiest ways to get banned is to spawn kill someone. But did you know you can also spawn trap someone in the end? In lots of servers, the end is usually a place to go and collect rare and valuable items and is super dangerous, so they'll come in good gear. This means you can trap the obsidian platform, use swords, lava, and even end crystals to take them out super quick. You can even use one of the traps from my last video and send a bunch of TNT to the end first, so anyone that goes through gets blown up instantly. Do this enough times and you'll secure yourself that good old tasty ban. Delicious. When playing on competitive servers, you're gonna need to hide your base somewhere in the wilderness, away from any prying eyes that want to steal your items. However, one of the most annoying and crazy 
cruel things you can do is to leak the coordinates of your team's base. Other teams will flock straight to the location and fight over anything they can possibly find. Because of how evil this is, most servers ban anyone that leaks coordinates. And if you want to take it a step further, how about you leak his house address too? Speaking of servers, ever joined a hardcore survival server? As all you need to do to get banned is to die. <laughs> Who knew getting banned could be that easy? But the mod I wish spawned in naturally was this unused pillager. And it's probably the coolest one yet. It's called the Illusioner. And instead of just using boring crossbows and axes, this one casts spells. And if you even just get close to one of them, it turns completely invisible and summons four duplicates in its place. <laughs> I'm starting to see why these things were removed. They're so overpowered. Go dog, go! <laughs> Oh, what a, what a shame. Pets are a man's best friend, but we're starved for fluffy buddies in Minecraft. All we have are dogs, cats, foxes, and parrots. We need more cuteness! Yet again, a hidden mob in Minecraft dungeons solves this. My favorites are the hedgehogs and the ferrets. They're just so adorable. And guess what? They don't even attack mobs, and the hedgehogs just roll around. Oh, it's too cute! Wait, why is it putting on shoes? Why is it turning blue? No! Speaking of Minecraft dungeons, it is filled with mobs that that so far haven't been added to the regular game. One of these is the Icy Icy I Ice Soldier? Ice Soldier. Ice Soldier. What a strange name. Thank God some game files call it the Chillager. That's a much better name. The Chillager is a mysterious cloaked type of pillager and summons ice chunks that it hurls at the player, dealing damage and slowness if it hits. It was actually part of the 2020 Minecraft mob vote, but was just beaten by the Glow Squid. I'm looking at you, Dream. This is why there's an achievement in dungeons called Isologer's Revenge for killing a Glow Squid with an Ice Staff. But we'll talk more about the mob votes later, including a hidden Minecraft sea monster? How about this sick looking wizard illager called the wind caller? Apparently it possesses mastery over the wind, so it's literally an airbender. Wind callers fly around in the sky, using its staff to blow gusts of wind at you, as well as summon tornadoes beneath you, launching you into the air. Guys, we've just invented a new form of air travel. Talking about end frames, some seeds have something a little bit more common, but just as weird. Instead of all the frames being filled, only a few of them will be, but the portal will still be lit. This one has just nine eyes and a full portal, but you can get portals with only two eyes which still work. There's some glitchy mechanics with chunk borders that make this work. When you load the world, the game checks one chunk at a time for a finished portal, and if it thinks one part of the frame is complete, it'll spawn the portal before it even looks at the rest. I don't even know what I just said. Cool. But let's head back above ground for a second to look at some crazy world generation. Mojang recently changed how terrain is made to make it seem more realistic. But when you look at this seed, it feels as though they completely messed it up. I promise you, I'm not in an amplified world. This is just how it looks around here. Complete with crazy cliff faces, floating islands, and awesome overhangs, this area has it all. It even has a lava stream burning all the plants near it to the ground. I'll admit, it does look cool when it breaks the bamboo though. Sorry, pandas. But this next one takes the cake for my favorite seed in Minecraft. Take a look at this. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. It looks like some sort of crazy asteroid belt or maybe the ring surrounding a planet. I guess because this is a Stony Peaks biome in the middle of an ocean, the game tried to make huge mountains and rocks, but it glitched out in a major way. I could totally imagine someone building a mysterious orb or machine that's supposed to make all of these rocks and precious minerals float in the air like this. I'll do it myself, but uh, building isn't really my strong suit. <laughs> now, you're gonna have to trust me when I say that Mojang really did update the world generation recently, because wells like this one make me question it myself. This seed spawns you right in the middle of the ocean, with no land anywhere to be seen. How does that even happen? The best part about this seed is that there's also tons of dangerous structures nearby, like a drowned ruin here, and even an ocean temple right next to spawn over there. I mean, I can't even make a sword to fight these things off. Is your friend one of those people that has a bunch of those drop shoots in their base to get around? A super simple way to mess with them is to simply change the water to a lapis block or blue stained glass. But a lot of people have grown wise to this and will check first. That's why you can add this setup of chests and water at the bottom so you can jump down and be totally fine. But when your friend follows you, he'll have a slightly less safe landing. Another similar trap is to place a drip leaf above a huge pit. When you fall onto it, you'll be totally fine. But it'll flip down when your friend falls and send them into the deep dark pit below. Did you know that observers can tell when you hop in a bed? This gives me an idea. Using a simple circuit with a dispenser, you can create a machine that'll stop them from ever sleeping. There's always one guy that's super protective about their builds and won't let you anywhere near them. And obviously, you can't just blow their base up. Or can you? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that didn't work. So instead, if you've got any copper in their build, try using an axe on it to change the color and then waxing it with honeycomb. Or if they have logs, simply strip them with an axe to change the color. Such a simple troll that will easily ruin any friendships you may have left. This super high IQ hack lets you farm mobs in the nether. Most mob farms use water to funnel the mobs into a drop that kills them. But you can't do that in the nether. So instead, use gas in Minecraft. Their big hitbox pushes other mobs to the edges where you can put a drop down to their doom. It can be great to make a village of your own, complete with villagers. But you need this hack to protect them from invaders. Fill a dispenser with armor and use it to launch the set into a villager. The village will actually use the armor, a perfect defense for your peaceful town. Campfires can look great in your home, but not if it smokes up the place. This hack removes the smoke completely. Just put two layers of string on top and the smoke stops. Filling a swimming pool with buckets of water can take way too long. So try this speedy hack instead. Stack ice blocks along two edges with a gap between and then break them down at speed with a pickaxe. The water will spill out in such a way that the whole pool gets filled like magic. This illegal machine lets you open a door simply by taking off a piece of armor. If you set it up exactly like I did here and turn this lectern to page 8, you'll create an undetectable illegal entrance that you shouldn't be able to build. Oh, it also activates when a ravager roars, but I think you've got bigger problems if that happens. If you're ever stranded at night surrounded by mobs, you can use a uh, composter? But that's right, jumping inside a composter with a trapdoor on top protects you from skeletons creepers, and all other mobs in a pinch, making this an illegal, completely portable base. But if you want a more permanent house that's just as quick to build, try bone mealing a red mushroom, chucking a floor in, adding some decorations, and you've got a perfect little fairy tale house that definitely wasn't meant to be a base. If you hide a leashed chicken underground, you can attach the lead to a fence and make what kind of looks like a floating balloon house. You can add some actual balloons up top, and you've basically got the house from up. You know those little waterfalls that come out of mountains? They're perfect for secret entrances. Just Break one block behind the source and dig down a little, and then you're free to build anything you want down there. Just be careful not to place any lights too close to the entrance, because that looks sus. If you use invisible item frames with the fake block trick from before, you can create one-way glass that you can use to secretly spy on all of your friends. This one definitely feels illegal. Uh-oh. It was a creeper! When you leave and rejoin a world, you get a couple seconds of invincibility. So if you find yourself in a bit of a spicy situation, you can leave and rejoin over and over and swim to safety like you're made out of obsidian. The shield is one of the most overpowered items in the whole game. It can block fireballs for God's sakes. But did you know that if you go through a portal while holding right click, you'll be permanently blocking in the next dimension, letting you sprint and attack while literally invincible. You can send secret messages with skulk blocks. Skulk usually spreads to stone blocks when it absorbs experience, but it won't take over blocks made with slabs. So simply write some letters out with slabs and find a way to cover it. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell just how low durability your tools are while mining, but if you hit F3 and H at the same time, you'll get the exact number of blocks it can mine left, you nerd. A campfire smoke is kind of pathetic. It only lasts for about 10 blocks before fading away. However, if you place a hay bale beneath it, it'll use that extra fuel to create a 25 block high smoke stream. It's obviously super cute that foxes can pick up and steal your items, but did you know they can actually use them too? If you try killing a fox while it's holding a totem, it won't die and just runs away from you like the monster you are. Luckily, this feature doesn't work on dogs. <laughs> Ever seen this before? Well, if you're from the future, then maybe. Because Mojang added bamboo blocks in the recent 1.20 snapshots, having both bamboo and stripped bamboo as separate blocks. I like saying bamboo. Bamboo, bamboo. The old bamboo block requires required four bamboo to craft, while the new one needs nine. This makes them pretty expensive, but at least your house will look cool. If you have a pet axolotl and don't have a name tag to make him your pet, you can scoop him up with a bucket and literally put him into an anvil. But don't worry, we aren't gonna murder him. If you're in a village raid but don't manage to kill all the raiders, that's a cool way to easily find them. If you ring the village bell and wait a few seconds, all remaining raiders within a 40 block radius will all light up with a glowing effect. This one is already semi-known, but hey, your boy's gotta eat. Did you know not all skeletons hold the bow in the same hand? In fact, 11% of the skeletons are left-handed, while 89% are right-handed. Mojang paid close attention to detail here, as this is the exact proportional percent in real life. 
If you drop a sword near a fox, they can actually pick it up. This means if a fox is holding a sword while attacking, it'll deal the same damage as the sword, making it incredibly overpowered. The best way to move villagers isn't to use minecarts or boats. It's actually just to use a bell. Villagers will all flock to a bed whenever a bell is rung. So if you remove all nearby beds and place just one wherever you want them to head to, they'll go straight there as soon as the bell is rung. Clever, isn't it? What's even smarter is this invisible elevator that uses wind. Crazy, right? Huh. Uh, you didn't see that. Okay, fine, it's not a wind elevator, but it's still really cool. If you place a bubble stream in a corner behind two honey blocks and then maps in item frames on the honey blocks, you'll create a hidden elevator that really does look like magic. Sometimes you just need a ton of filler blocks for a project. So what's the fastest block to farm in bulk? Well, you can obviously build gigantic wood, cobblestone, or moss farms. But if you just want something simple, try trapping a snowman and using stone shovels to instantly obtain hundreds of snow blocks you can use for whatever your heart desires. If you've ever built an enderman farm, you know it can be pretty tiring to constantly click on enderman to get XP. But did you know that splash water bottles actually hurt enderman? That means if you get them low with full damage, you can just chuck one every so often to gain tons of XP and infinite satisfaction. I could literally do this for hours. Speaking of splash potions, have you ever noticed that you don't get quite as much effect time as a potion says? Well, that's probably because you're throwing them at the ground or a wall. If you throw them straight up so they land on your head, you'll get the full advertised time. Most people only place carpets on, you know, the floor, but they can actually be placed in way more places than you realize. Above string, water, slabs, buttons, other carpets, crops, and even fire. Although that one might not go too well. There are so many potions in the game now, so many that I barely even remember how to craft half of them, or any of them. But that's not an issue for this secret potion, literally called the Uncraftable Potion. As the name suggests, you can't craft it or even obtain it in survival mode. Drinking it does absolutely nothing, but it looks kind of pretty, I guess. Something you can craft that I bet you don't know about is the End Rod. I've spent so long raiding end cities for these, but it turns out you can just craft them with some chorus fruit and a blaze rod. The more you know, I guess. Tipped arrows are more useful than you realize. You can use harming arrows with a piercing crossbow to deal tons of damage to multiple mobs at a time, and even collect the arrows after. And if you hit yourself with a slow falling arrow, you'll fly super high when using a riptide trident, allowing yourself to float for miles with an elytra. And speaking of elytras, remember when firework rockets didn't exist so we had to use punch bows to boost ourselves? Or am I just really old? You're old, son. If your friend wants a nice oxidized copper roof, trick them by secretly waxing the copper blocks with honeycomb. They'll be waiting for days wondering why it's not turning that lovely shade of green. Check out this infinite lightning rod. If you can trap your friend in a room above one, see how long they can survive as lightning constantly strikes around them. Bring extra difficulty by dropping hostile mobs in with them. This deadly trick is devilishly simple. If your friend uses water to jump great distances, put a blue tinted block over the water. It totally blends in, and you can watch as your friend slams into it at full speed. In Minecraft Bedrock, zombified piglins have a very small chance to spawn into the other world when a nether portal is first lit, which can make for a very scary surprise. Some players, however, have capitalized on this to make overpowered piglin farms that give infinite gold and resources. When you load an arrow or firework rocket into a crossbow, it'll update the icon to your hotbar to let you know which one it has in it. But if you drop the crossbow on the ground, the crossbow no longer shows what item it has in it, at least until you pick it up again. So try not to drop your firework crossbow into a pile of normal ones. <laughs> okay, let's be honest, no one is doing that. You should hide at night to protect yourself from monsters, right? Well, not if you're on the rare mushrooms biome. It would be a mistake to waste those nighttime hours, because hostile mobs just don't spawn on mushroom biomes, unless there's a monster spawner. One mistake is not getting a cat. It turns out creepers hate cats and will run if there are too many around your home. Plus, look how cute they are. Aww. Stop using powered rails. They're expensive and unnecessary. If you really want that speed boost, saddle up a pig and put it in the rail cart. No, I'm serious. Riding the pig in the minecart while pushing forward lets you move almost as fast on normal rails as you would on powered ones. Using a furnace for your food is a big mistake. Use a campfire. It doesn't need any fuel. And even if the fire gets put out, you can use a silk touch shovel to recover it and the fire will be lit again. Which is might seem like one of the most dangerous mobs in the game, but they're actually completely defenseless against ranged attacks. If you want to abuse this the most, try grabbing a crossbow and a power five bow and shooting them right after each other. The witch dies instantly. Not so powerful now, are you? Striders obviously feel most comfortable in lava. I mean, you've seen what they look like on land, so predictably, if you go to all the effort to bring one from the nether into the overworld, first of all, you're a monster. But secondly, they'll take damage in water. So if you need an unconventional string farm, you know what to do. Magma cubes are more dangerous than slimes, but they still have the same issue. However, the only danger they'll really face is those big cliffs in the nether since they're immune to fire damage. You may think they're also weak to water like striders, but for some reason, they just like chilling it. I guess there's no water in the nether, so it kind of makes sense. But what if you just 
just lucky. If you're walking through the game and find this adorable little lamb, you might be the luckiest gamer alive. This pink lamb can naturally spawn, but it's so rare most players never see it. There's only a 0.0082% chance of spawning. You could fake that with die, but one secret mob you can't fake is a rare and exclusive brown panda. You have to find this super rare panda the hard way. One item Mojang never even intended to make is the fabled triple chest. It has only been recorded once in the entire history of Minecraft, in an old version of the game. In the abandoned mine, back when mine chests didn't spawn in minecarts, they could spawn next to a monster spawner's chest, making a fully functional triple chest. A high-level secret that many players don't know exists is a conduit. This special beacon-style item creates an underwater zone where you can never drown, or hurting any naturally hostile underwater mobs nearby. It's so hard to get though that it needs a heart of the sea, nautilus shells, and plenty of prismarine just to function at all. The blue axolotl is the rarest version of that mob in Minecraft, but the announcement for Caves and Cliffs Part 1 shows off the green axolotl. This was an early version of the axolotl that never made it into the release game, making it even rarer than the blue one. The heart of the sea is this blue orb, but it holds a secret. When fully activated as a conduit, the heart opens, showing a staring orange eye. This ancient fact is from even before Minecraft was made. It turns out the original apple sprite in Minecraft is from a previous game made by Notch, called Legend of the Chambered. Don't be so hasty with enchantments. Some have hidden properties, like quick charge. At level 6 and above, crossbows with this enchantment stops the reload animation at the first frame, which is before the crossbow is loaded, and so won't load at all. Here's a trick that will freak your friends out. Carpet can actually be placed on any non-air block, even lava. It's tricky and dangerous, but you can walk on lava like it's nothing. It's easiest with moss carpet, as that doesn't burn. And for even more detail in these buildings, try using this square character to make it look like signs are nailed down. This works really well for boarding up doors and windows. You can even use spruce trap doors placed on the ground to give the effect that a door was broken down. Waterlogged stairs can be used to make tiny creeks that wind throughout your buildings, but a more practical use for them is to add water sources to your farms that you can't fall into. Animation is the best way to make any building come alive, and the absolute easiest way to do this is to hide a spore blossom somewhere. They create a bunch of these tiny little green particles that are just so, so pretty. Sometimes the flames from fire and campfires are just way too big, so instead try putting an armor stand below ground and lava for a much smaller and way cuter little flame. <laughs> oh, look at it, so tiny. By placing banners below stair blocks, you can make couches with cushions. This also works for beds and comfy chairs. If you want to be able to actually use your chairs, you can push a stair or slab into a minecart and you'll be able to sit in it. And if you want chairs to put outside, campfires make great benches coupled with signs and trap doors. They also work great in log piles to add extra detail in the form of tiny little logs or sticks, as some people call them. I also like to add barrels, fences, and slabs to these to add extra detail and storage to a survival build like this. Unfortunately, you can only get invisible item frames in creative, but there's sort of a solution in survival. If you place a block in an item frame on the floor, a snow layer will fully cover up the item frame but leave the block exposed, allowing you to, I don't know, make pebbles or something? You know how to make a birdcage? But how about an aquarium? This one's actually even easier, but probably just as cruel. All you have to do is surround a chest with trap doors, place a glass block on top, then waterlog the chest with a bucket of fish, and boom! You've trapped him forever. Sorry, fishy. Cobwebs aren't just good for making a cave or mine shaft feel extra creepy. They're also good for adding custom smoke to chimneys and for adding a net to a basketball hoop. Most people know you can make a really convincing dead tree with stripped logs and mangrove roots. So instead, try creating a dead warped tree with muddy mangrove roots, dead coral, and hanging roots. Oh yeah, muddy mangrove roots with a candle on top makes a pretty convincing rotten melon if you ever need that for some reason. Rooted Dirt finally gave us another dirt block that's not just gonna turn into grass instantly, giving us way more decoration options. One of my favorite ways to use this is to mix rooted and coarse dirt in a pattern like this to make wheel tracks through a forest. Unfortunately, snowmen don't do damage to mobs with their attacks, but they will push them back and get their attention. If you spread a bunch of them out in tall towers around your base, they'll totally stop any mobs from attacking you and keep you safe. And if it's players you're worried about, try swapping a snowman out for a skeleton and adding fire around it to create a truly spicy surprise for any intruders. I think the most underrated item in 1.20 is the calibrated skulk sensor. When you place an amethyst block next to it, it'll relay any signal it gets to any other nearby sensors. Using this, you can create essentially infinite wireless redstone that's only activated by certain noises in certain places. So if I eat this piece of food here, the sensors will relay the signal along and teleport me using this enderpearl status machine. This will make your base literally impossible to find. You should know that if you're playing on hard mode, a door probably isn't enough to keep you safe from zombies. So instead, try placing two end rods like this as a door instead. You can slide through perfectly, but mobs have a really hard time. And if end rods aren't your style, this works with bamboo, different kinds of fences, and even lightning rods. But I'll be careful using these in bad weather. Ah! These do have a slight drawback.
like though is if you manage to anger enough mobs, it can push each other through. So for an entrance that's almost foolproof, add a line of cobblestone walls with some carpets on top. Not even spiders can get past. This fun hack will protect your buildings from being mined away by dirty griefing players. It's simple. Just hide an elder guardian underneath your home, and breaking your walls and floors will become near impossible. Another way to defend is to make sure your enemy actually dies with this high IQ hack. Normally, your enemy can jump out of lava, but if you put a honey block under a cauldron with lava in it, it becomes way harder and almost guarantees they won't survive. This weird hack lets you actually sleep among the fishes. It turns out you can put a bed underwater, and it will make an air pocket when you lie in that bed. You can even use this hack to hide your bed away, because nobody will expect to see it there. Freak your friends out with this wild pig riding hack. See, if you make your floor out of path blocks and put a gap underneath the floor, you can ride a pig through that empty space, and your head will pop out of the path like a severed head greeting your guests. Another looks great, and this hack lets you bring it to the safety of your own home. Instead of using a portal, put the obsidian blocks in your wall. Then go through and recreate the nether on the other side. You get all the looks with none of the danger. This sneaky hack lets you hide vines under item frames, which you can then place maps over or paintings. The vines are hidden but still work, letting you climb them like invisible ladders. Need a truly secret entrance? This hack lets you use a composter as a trapdoor. If you drop an item here, it falls into a hopper minecart, which activates the mechanism and drops you underground, allowing you out into your secret base. Having a villager at home is old news. This hack lets you have a totally tame pillager. Just trap one in a boat and row it back home. He'll be shooting the whole time, but he won't hit you, and will eventually break his crossbow, making him totally harmless. This one is my butler. I call him Barry Halls. However, if you want a less legitimate way to get super rich, there's still a bunch of ways to duplicate items in 1.19. By placing a fence under an end portal and dropping an anvil from seven blocks above, it will duplicate the anvil. Activating tripwires attached the trap doors will duplicate the tripwire hooks. I don't know why you need that many tripwire hooks, but hey, you do you, bro. And if you ever wanted to get infinite TNT, there's a ton of ways to do this using slime blocks, minecarts, and dead coral fans. Just make sure to use this to blow up your friend's build to maximize your chances of getting banned. But if you really like duplication items, we've got one more for you. All you need is some coral, some slime, an observer, a piston, and of course, some carpets. And voila! Carpet heaven. And the best part about this is that you can actually use these carpets as fuel in furnaces. I bet you didn't know that. Now, if you want to take it a step up to secure a Mojang ban, we got your back. As this happens all the time to people who buy accounts considered rare. If Mojang finds out you bought an account from someone else, they will lock it. And you won't even be able to play single player worlds on it. The most valuable accounts are ones with short or special names like Iron, Moo, or Assman. God, I love that account. Or just generally accounts with special special features or exclusive items. Mojang, if you're watching this, please unban ass man. It's all I have left. Everyone hates lag, and in normal cases, you want to avoid it. But when you're trying to get banned, it's your best friend. What most people don't know is that there's a way to lag out entire servers super easily. The best way to do this is to place a whole bunch of soul sand in an ocean, and then throw as many snowballs as you possibly can, which collect into the pool of bubbles. And it's done. All of the bubbles send the snowballs flying up and down, which destroys destroys the server. This lag is so bad, it deserves a prison sentence. Please don't do this, unless you like prison. Which, to be honest, free food, no rent, no parents. That's it, I'm doing this right now. There's also the Mage Illager, a purple wizard that magically picks you up and then smashes you back into the ground without the yelling. But you can yell if you want to. Smash! It feels good. And finally, these tough, rugged mountaineers. They use their ice picks to attack you and deal damage that way. They're also able to dig their picks into the ground so they don't get blown away by the harsh mountain winds. Could you imagine if Minecraft had all these cool mobs and ideas? It'd be so cool! Silverfish are the most annoying mob ever! I'm not sure I've met anyone that likes them or even knows why they're in the game, but somehow Mojang managed to make them even worse. Back in the Minecraft 2.0 April Fools update, they added redstone bugs, and they are exactly as they sound, having a chance to spawn whenever redstone was set off. The more of them nearby, the higher the chance they had to spawn, meaning they got out of control very easily. I mean very easily. They're everywhere! Help! But unlike redstone bugs, wandering trader is an awesome idea for a mob. But because of how terrible their trades are, they're kind of useless. However, Minecraft Dungeons actually fix that by adding an extra type of merchant called the Luxury Merchant. This guy comes from a land far, far away and sells rare, valuable items that players haven't discovered yet. But it's not cheap. For certain trades, you even have to slay a certain number of mobs and mini-bosses. Nothing's ever free in this world. There's also the Mystery Merchant.
merchant who sells you loot boxes with random loot inside. But don't worry, these aren't like CSGO cases, and you can buy these with plain old emeralds. It gives you different types of gear based on what case you buy. So if you need a new sword and you're feeling lucky, you can take a chance to win a brand new enchanted diamond sword. Just don't get addicted. The Phantom, Glow Squid, and Alley were all added in mob votes. But I bet you didn't know the panda was as well. That's right, it was actually added in a secret Chinese mob vote to celebrate the release of Minecraft China. Other contenders were crocodiles, monkeys, deer, and pink dolphins. Obviously, the panda is way cooler than the rest. But imagine monkeys in Minecraft. They might have given squid competition for goofiest mob. But then again, crocodiles would have made swamps and jungles way more dangerous. Talking about these votes, could you remember what the other options were in 2017? Alongside the phantom, they showed us the terrifying barnacle. Trust me, it's scarier than it sounds. It's supposed to be a huge sea monster found deep in the ocean. It would suck you underwater using its tentacles and wouldn't let you escape from its slimy grasp unless you managed to kill it. Which raises the question, why would you want to kill it? I just want to be held. Most people don't know that there's actually swamp villagers in Minecraft. They look super cool. But unfortunately, Mojang hasn't added villagers for them to spawn in naturally yet. But this seed stays otherwise. Slapped right in the middle of this massive swamp is a tiny plains biome covered almost completely by a village. Doesn't this thing look weird? This house is actually completely in the swamp. So if two villagers were to uh, procreate, uh, 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 they'd make a little cute swamp villager. Aww. It's too bad we don't have any dwarven villagers though because they'd fit so perfectly in this seed. A ravine spawned right in the middle of this village, causing some of the houses to be placed on the ground in the caves. Check it out. There's even a farm down here. Ah, and some cave kitties too. Aww. And this iron golem is on full-time guard down here. There's zombies everywhere. Here, I'll help you. Still, this underground village is nothing compared to the huge ancient cities that were added in the 1.19 update. Just one of these things can span for miles underground, and they feel even cooler when you have to sneak around wardens. But this seed has something even crazier, an underground mega city? That's right, in just this one deep dark biome, there are 15 ancient cities that span over thousands of blocks. Check out the build of this seed. Each one of these lanterns is one city, and there's tons of them. Ancient cities are usually super hard to find though, as they're already extremely rare. And it's even harder to find them when they're so far underground. But this other seed solves that problem. All you've got to do is walk a few blocks from your spawn, dig straight down, and you're there. Ta-da! Oh crap, I didn't bring any tools. I guess I'm stuck down here now. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. Oh sh**. If you want to cause a more permanent problem for your friend though, this one might be for you. Using this setup of slime blocks and redstone, you can create a rocket that'll send your friend all the way up to the top of the world. Ever notice that light gray stained glass truly ruin your friendship? Try building this in someone's roof and add a hopper and dispenser to shoot out the eggs to chicken lays. Their house will be filled with baby chicks in no time and they'll have no idea why. Every Minecraft player knows the pain of glass panes look exactly the same as an empty inventory slot. This means you can secretly fill somebody's inventory with them, or worse, fill all their chests with them. And if you name them all differently, they'll have to slowly remove every single piece individually. Speaking of chests, they're a perfect way to test the strength of your friendship. With a comparator, some pistons, and a diamond, you can test exactly how much you should be trusting your friends. One of the best parts about pranking somebody is being able to see their reaction when they realize what's happening, and nothing does that better than this setup made by Grian. Nobody can resist the satisfaction of punching out a huge tower of scaffolding, so build one up above somebody's House, but have it hold just a single block of lava like this. When your friend goes to break it and realizes what's happened, it's already too late, and you'll get to watch them scramble to try and stop it. Another of Grian's devious inventions is the boat bomb, and this one's even simpler. All you've got to do is craft a ton, and I mean a ton of boats, and chuck them on top of a hopper, and dispense them all out like this. As soon as an unsuspecting explorer comes along and tries to get in, yeah, I'll make sure they find this themselves, so you don't have to help clean it up. Dripstone can drop and do real damage, so why not use this hack to make a fun defense for your castle. Bounce the dripstone off these slime blocks and pistons, and the stone will be launched out toward any incoming players storming your fort. Powdered snow is technically a full block, but you can actually pass through it with this weird hack. It turns out you can fly through it with elytra, passing through to the other side without losing any speed. So why not use it as a secret wall or entrance? Ice some water travel systems for your items can end up with traffic jams, especially the corners. So use this build hack to make your system perfecto. Put two seat 
vehicles at the corner and they will guide the items around the corners, sticking to the edge of the tunnel, straight to their destination. Get your minecarts going fast with this high-speed hack with much less redstone. Minecarts take turns fast, so if you lay your rails out into these circles, the minecarts will turn constantly, gaining super fast and still in a straight line. Just close your eyes while it's happening. <laughs> this quick and easy hack lets you build an iron farm really fast and really early in the game. All you need is an iron golem spawning platform that's very small and a campfire at the top, leaving no room for the golem to walk away from it, taking damage and dropping all of its precious iron. They actually behave almost exactly the same as a vindicator named Johnny, a secret mob that definitely doesn't keep me awake at night. Here's Johnny! Duh! Grandma, what? If you build an end portal in this specific way and fill the northern frames in last, the end portal will generate in completely the wrong place. If you want it to actually work, you have to place all the frames from the inside. But I think this looks way cooler. If you type flower into the creative menu, it'll only show you these ones. If you want to see all of them, you need to put a hashtag in front. For some reason though, typing hashtag blocks only shows you these four nether blocks. I think I'm having an identity crisis. Think mob farms are the best way to get XP? Think again! Getting achievements actually gives you experience each time you get them. So if you manage to find all the nether biomes, you'll get a nice reward of 19 levels. Speedrunner Feinberg even used this in his all advancements world record to get the levels he needed to enchant his trident. This dude's got like five of my brains in there. Each block in the game has a hardness level that tells you how difficult it is to break or blow up, and it actually hides a pretty crazy secret. If stone has a hardness of 1.5 and obsidian has a hardness of 50, what do you think bedrock would have? A million? Infinity? Turns out it's actually minus one. I'm sure there's some crazy nerdy code reason as to why this is, but come on, look at me. I've got no idea. Using maps and item frames, you can build huge 2D replicas of fake blocks and create super detailed hidden entrances you can use to hide almost anything. Check out this desert. See anything wrong? There's actually two hidden bases here. One inside this cactus and one behind this sand block. All you need to do is place the maps inside an item frame placed on a sign and your base is suddenly invisible. You can actually make a base in the void. Sure, you can't place blocks down here, even in creative mode, but there's an illegal workaround. Using a chicken, leads, and boats. You can spawn shulkers down here and walk on them as if they're normal blocks. They'll even use levitation to send you back up. Look, all of us have wanted to live inside a video game at one point, and with some glass, terracotta, and buttons, you can. Imagine seeing this while playing on your Nintendo Switch. Hang on. I think I'm trapped. Let me out! Let me out! Huh? Oh god, that's even worse! This base can't be blown up, even with 1000 TNT. Surrounding your base with waterlogged stairs makes it completely protected from all explosions, including creepers, completely going against what Notch intended. Sorry, bro. It's no secret that Mojang is sometimes a little lazy when it comes to textures, with bedrock just being an overly saturated stone, and endstone being an inverted version of cobblestone. But I bet none of you realize that the jungle log texture is just a rotated version of the oak log. Speaking of being overpowered, though, did you know that creepers can climb ladders? I'm already terrified of getting ninja bombed by them in ravines. Why do I have to be scared of this now too? But creepers have been hiding another secret from us too. If they're affected by a potion effect from an arrow, or you know, a potion, when they explode, they'll leave a lingering pool of that potion effect wherever they stood. What can you use this for? Don't ask questions! Moving on! No matter how high they fall from, cats will never take full damage. You can send them all the way from build limit to bedrock and they'll walk away like nothing happened. Conversely, dogs do take damage and anvil damage. It's just so beautiful. Zombified piglins are terrifying to fight in the nether, but if you manage to get a weapon powerful enough to kill them in one hit, they won't get mad, and you can take them out one by one. Flower forests are one of the prettiest biomes in the game, and one of the easiest places to farm all the different dyes too. But strangely, the flowers don't actually generate in random places. Each area in this biome can only spawn a specific flower, which means you can map it out using bone meal to create a really cool effect. Bees in Minecraft actually work work really similar to how they do in real life. When they sting you, they don't just lose their stinger and end up dying shortly after. They actually leave it inside you. It's easiest to see when you turn invisible and ugh, why are they adding tweezers to the game? If you've ever tried shooting through a door, you know the arrows won't go through the hole of the door, even though there's clearly enough space for an arrow to fit through. But with items like pistons, chains, or a slanted staircase, you'll be able to shoot right through. So yeah, make your doors as chains so you can shoot intruders. This game makes no 
sense. Make sure you shoot the dogs. Want to be immortal in Minecraft? Well, there's a game-breaking tactic in the game which makes it impossible for you to die. An emo's worst nightmare. To do this, just craft a boat, place it on the ground, and get in and out of it really quickly. It'll trick Minecraft into thinking you're still inside of the boat. From there, you can jump off high buildings, live underwater, and blow yourself up without taking any damage at all. And the best thing is, if you ever get trapped or get lost, you can always just press shift to teleport back into the boat. Now that's pretty cool, depending on your age. And if you like Minecraft, pretty subjective, really. But even cooler than an immortal glitch is a building that will literally morph you into an unkillable soldier. If you're familiar with anarchy servers, you have definitely heard of 2B2T. Anarchy servers have absolutely no rules, meaning you can do anything. Rob banks, grief bases, or kill lots of dogs. But the one thing you cannot do is building a lag machine. But obviously, players decided to break it, building this huge structure which was over 100 blocks tall and looked amazing. However, it didn't go to plan, as instead players near the machine had their hitboxes disappear, making them literally immortal. This machine was mysteriously removed, never to be seen or spoken about again. This is a regular nether portal, and this is a heather nortal. Wait, what? While well, Minecraft has a history of weird nether portals, there's never been anything quite as weird as this one, literally. To do this, you need an update suppressor, which is a structure that allows you to force skip block updates by basically bugging the game out of functioning. And let's be honest, I have no idea how you do this, and you probably <laughs> don't care either. So after some off-camera building, here it is! A Heather Nortal. Now that's one of life's greatest achievements. When Mojang added XP, they expected you to farm it by killing edible mobs kill dogs. and leveling up the normal way. However, what Mojang didn't expect is if you put a ton of mobs all in the same place, they will die of entity cramming. And you can get that sweet, sweet XP. And with Sweeping Edge, you can kill the rest of them with one hit, making it possible to create a self-sustaining mob farm that just feeds you XP. Huh, so that's how McDonald's works. So if you really really want to break Minecraft? I got something for you. If you create a world with the only blocks being ladders, they will defy logic and not let you climb as intended, making you fall indefinitely into the void. This is probably the most useless thing you could ever do, but hey, from a distance, this looks pretty cool. And, oh wait, my game crashed. That was worth. I feel very accomplished. Instead of spending ages converting all your concrete powder to concrete before building, just build any walls or floors out of the powder and flood it afterwards. And if you're ever left with a ton of wet sponges for whatever reason, don't dry them in a furnace. Instead, take them to the nether where they'll dry out instantly in the heat. And then you can use an enchanted hoe to pick them up super fast and get straight back to sucking. God, why did I just say that? Most people strip mine in a 2 by one hole like this, but there's actually an even more efficient way to do it, as long as you're not claustrophobic. Place a water bucket or trap door and start crawling. Then mine forward and you'll be in a one by one hole. This is faster because for every two blocks you break, exposing ten different possibly diamond filled blocks instead of just eight in the other method. Just trust me, okay? It makes sense! When you're out in the end raiding cities, shulkers can actually get really annoying, especially as you get further up the buildings. So before heading into one, grab some chorus fruit. If you get hit by a bunch of pellets and end up floating high above the ground, eat some chorus right before you fall, and it'll teleport you back down without dealing damage. You have to do it with levitation active though. I learned that the hard way. This does, however, also work with elytras, allowing you to get back to the ground super quickly and painlessly. How many times have you tried leaving an animal pen just for all of the mobs to follow you out and escape through the gate? Well, I have a fix! You can use an L-shaped layout like this, a wall block or a carpet to create exits that only the player can use. The best part is that it means I don't have to remember how to craft those stupid fence gates! Spyglasses aren't that useful on their own, but if you use Optifine, you can use that as well to get a super zoom! Hitting F1 will remove that annoying overlay too. Ever wanted to learn how to become invincible in Minecraft without armor? If you eat a god apple and then a regular golden apple straight after, you'll keep some of the absorption even after the effect wears off. This means you can repeat this as much as you want to gain literally hundreds of hearts. It doesn't come cheap, but come on, only the top 0.1% smartest people know this. You're rich anyway! You know how you need two water buckets to create an infinite water source? Well, 
Oh, you know nothing! <laughs> Sorry, that was me. But seriously, you only need one now as long as you have either kelp or a cauldron. Using this setup, you can place kelp here to magically create two new sources. And you can use water bottles to fill a cauldron and conjure another bucket full. Setting up a farm for food can be super difficult early game. But there's a hidden cheat code only 1% of people know. If you're brave enough to challenge the nether and make a run to a soul sand valley, you can farm the fossils for tons of bone meal you can bring back with you for a head start on all your farming needs. Silverfish don't seem that dangerous at first, but it's not uncommon to find yourself in a stronghold severely outnumbered in just a few seconds. But silverfish only spawn when a player deals damage to them, meaning you can just use lava or a flint and steel to totally avoid spawning them. This boat is actually a trick. When you get in, it explodes into as many boats as you want. To make it, just pour a ton of boats into a hopper that drops into a dispenser on repeat. It will place boat after boat after boat into the same spot on the water. Then you should break the machine apart and watch the chaos from afar as your friend tries to get in. A dirty trick to swipe their goods is to hide a hopper underneath their furnace. Their new smelted ingots fall right into your evil clutches. Keep those stolen goods out of sight by hiding them in chests. These actually have a limit on how far they can be before the game stops showing them. So if you put them all the way to the top of the sky above the clouds, your friend will never find what you took. Speaking of golden apples, apparently there's always one single golden apple in this chest right here. And it's actually the key to a secret room in the ancient city. If you take it down here and eat it in this exact spot, this door will open. All that's inside is a bunch of redstone stuff I don't understand, but hey, it's true. And if we head back up, there's this huge abandoned portal looking thing right in the middle of the city. But have you actually seen anyone like this thing before? Here we go. It works. Let's see where it takes us. Oh, just another. Probably because this is actually just obsidian. This one's false. Apparently, you can actually make two block jumps with cactus or fire damage. You just have to time it perfectly. God, the, but I did it! I've heard you can do it with a bubble column too. Oh yeah, that's way easier and much less painful. Mob heads are extremely rare, but most players never even bother to collect them. Well, that changes today! Did you know that wearing a zombie head actually reduces their detection range by 50%, allowing you to blend in with them and live out your days as a zombie? I love brains. Did you know it's actually possible to ban yourself from a single player world? All you have to do is cram a bunch of weird text into a book, then fill an entire shulker box with them. The information is just too much for Minecraft to handle. So it'll just ban you. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this, but hey, it's possible. Curing a zombie villager takes forever. But what most people don't know is you can actually speed up this process. For whatever reason, placing beds and iron bars around the villager will actually speed up the curing process by about 4%. Which sure, isn't that much, but hey, every second counts. If you think placing water in the nether is impossible, well, you're wrong. On this specific Minecraft snapshot, Mojang messed up and accidentally allowed players to bring water into the nether. If you place a piece of glow lichen in water, then shear the glow lichen and silk touch, placing this piece in the nether would cause water to start flowing everywhere, allowing me to fulfill my dreams and create a water paradise. Okay, just joking, this is a texture pack. Foxes can hold items in their mouths, but they won't just hold the item. After a while, they'll attempt to eat it if it's a food item. This means foxes are able to teleport when eating a chorus fruit, and if they eat something like a suspicious stew, they'll actually gain the effect from that as well. <laughs> just about everyone knows that sticks are a terrible fuel source when it comes to smelting items, but if you pour and that's all you have, I got you covered. Use a craft table to turn them into ladders, which will make your sticks much more effective as a fuel source. It's so easy to get lost in Minecraft. It even happens to me sometimes. But if you make a banner, name it using the anvil, then use the map on it, it'll show up on your map, plain as day. Now I just have to find my anvil to get started. Hmm, where did I put that? Want to loot a desert temple? Do not forget your water bucket. It's really useful if you accidentally step on that central pressure plate. Dig through it to expose the TNT, then pour that water on top. The first TNT will explode, but won't damage anything or ignite the other TNT. This trident with Riptide is great for the high jump, but a big mistake people make is using it in deep water. You actually do much higher jumps in a one block deep puddle. The sniper doll achievement can be really hard to get normally, but this is Minecraft. Get creative. Trap a skeleton in a hole, put a block above its head, shoot the block with arrows, put a sticky piston there, connect the switch 50 blocks away, pull the switch, the block moves, the skeleton dies, and you get your shiny new achievement. This milk is special. It was milked from a squid. That's because back in beta 1.2, squid could be milked just like cows. It was later taken out of the game, but modders all over the world have been desperately trying to put it back into the game. This mound of snow holds a secret. It's actually an igloo, and exactly 50% of the time, there's a secret trapdoor underneath, leading to a golden apple. 
example, a zombie villager and a regular villager. If you cure the zombie villager, you've got yourself the makings of a brand new village. Invisibility is amazing, but it's not perfect. Wearing armor makes you more visible, but even without nothing on at all, bats and cats can see you clear as day. So if you see some bats freaking out about nothing, it might be another player sneaking up on you. It's super gross, but this baby panda can make a slime ball. All you have to do is wait for it to sneeze, and the gooey snot has a chance of coming out of the full slime ball ready to be used. This mushroom is a light source. It may not look it, but the brown mushroom is generating the lowest light in the game, light level one. Before glow berries, it might have been the only food that could glow. In fact, this is actually based on real mushrooms that glow in the dark. In the Java edition, you can use rail tracks to block mobs completely. Certain enemies like zombies and piglins will not cross the rails, unless they're a phantom and fly over it. Check out this sick grappling hook made entirely in game. You just use a bunch of command blocks. It checks that you launch the fishing bobber, drags you toward it, removes the bobber when you reach it, and even stops you when you hit a wall for a perfect grappling hook experience. Some items have only existed in a single update, including mad experiments like this special little chicken that actually lays diamonds instead of eggs. They don't taste good in an omelet, though, and the chickens have a bad habit of exploding. One item you were never supposed to get is bedrock. But if you put end crystals around the end portal after killing a dragon and then quickly explode them with a click before the dragon resummons, there's a slight chance a piece of that bedrock will fall through the portal and end up as a usable block at world spawn. Check out this nether portal, or a uh, tether nortal? This reverse nether portal requires this insane contraption of update suppressor rails that lets you destroy pieces of the frame without this area of the portal breaking. Use water to break the inner section and you can fill that with obsidian. Then break the rest of the frame and you get this mind-bending result. Hey, that's illegal! This impossible end portal doesn't have a frame. To get this, build a portal, hide a mushroom one block to the side and three blocks below. Bone meal it and the mushroom will grow in delete the frame. Do this on all sides and the portal will exist on its own. Just make sure you don't accidentally walk in. Uh, I, I, good dragon. Now this definitely should be impossible. This rare style of lava block is actually a weird glitch. Where if you trap some lava, use a redstone block, piston and slime to break the walls without letting the lava out, destroy the redstone, the piston, then the rest, you end up with a lava block that floats in midair. You'll need a lot of luck for a bunch of these rare items, so better get a rabbit's foot to help just in case. But they're rare too. They drop only a fraction of the time when hunting these cute little bunnies. Sorry fellas, it's for the content. DIE! This rare item is a lot more dangerous. Get a bottle and scoop up the dragon's breath in the middle of a fight with the ender dragon. Glowstone and sea lanterns are things of the past. Instead, try placing turtle legs on top of end rods to make a lampshade. By placing an armor stand with a chainmail helmet inside a block like this, you can add a pressure plate on top and make a cool decorative chessboard. You can't play it though. Not that I even know how. If you place food on an item frame below a pressure plate, looks like it's being served on a dinner plate. Most people make castle gates. They're called portcullises, by the way. Most people make portcullises with fences or walls, but the lecterns make a perfect and super unique version instead. Plain block walls can look boring, so try adding extra blocks of similar colors for more texture. This coupled with glass panes placed like this can make a room much more interesting. You could also just use wall blocks as they're literally made for building walls. You can even mix a type of wall round for extra variety. This also works for adding texture to outside walls. And finally, finally, might be a good use for the brick block. People have been using cobwebs for chimney smoke since the dawn of time, so instead you can use coral fans to create a similar but more interesting effect. Alternatively, you could use a campfire to make actual animated smoke to bring a little bit of life to your builds. But my favorite use for campfires is to place them under the floor in any of my spookier builds, lake, a cave, or a graveyard. The smoke will rise up and make fog dust mysterious and, honestly, a little claustrophobic! So let's be honest though, one of the best ways to protect your base is to just hide it really well. So next time you're feeling too lazy to set up tons of traps on your turf, try heading to a snowy biome and hiding it like this. Pick a random snow-covered block and place a few scaffolding below it. Then dig two holes either side, add a bubble elevator in one, and now you have an invisible base that you can even crouch around in to hide your name tag. That's if you can remember where you put it, which, let's be honest, I can't. Mobs have got way better at pathfinding compared to how they used to be, but they still have some issues. For some reason, they still don't see carpets as blocks. So if you fill a pit like this with them, you're totally protected from mobs. Two tall flowers like sunflowers and roses work for this too. If you're like me and can never remember where you put your secret entrances, try this out. Shulker boxes are a great way to sort your items. But if I jump on top of this one and open it, suddenly I'm in my second secret base. For some reason, you can fall through shulker boxes if there's a block above your head, allowing for a perfect entrance that you can even color code and use as storage. Everyone knows zombies love turtle eggs. Or hate them, I guess. But you can actually use this to protect your base. With just a single turtle egg and a trap door, you can create this super simple zombie trap that will kill every zombie nearby for you for almost no cost. Have another great defense hack that brings an adorable edge to your 
builds. If you want to keep creepers away from blowing up all your hard work, get a bunch of cats. The more, the better. Creepers and even phantoms are afraid of them, and will turn and run if the cat gets too close. This hack lets you show off a puffer fish in a glass case, puffed up at all times. It does this because there's actually an armored stand underneath, keeping it on edge. Above the stand is a waterlogged chest, keeping the fish alive, and a picture frame to cover that up. The glass case is a block that's been pushed on top with a piston to keep the fish in place. Optical illusions can be used in some crazy hacks, like this house that watches you wherever you go, thanks to the way those creepy eyes have been made. They actually sink into the building, creating that creepy illusion. I've got my eye on you. This weird hack takes advantage of a cute little axolotl. If you tie a leash to one and connect that to a post, that post gets this cool rope model put on it. And when you pick the axolotl up again in the bucket, the leash is gone, but the rope stays, providing a nice detail to your fancy bridge or fence. Check out this insane near illegal hack, where this water is somehow protected from the lava. What's actually happening is that the lower block has a waterlogged sign, and that sign is keeping the lava up, while the waterlogging makes sure it doesn't burn. It's a crazy hack which can be a crazy decoration to show your friends. Most servers stop you from using commands for obvious reasons, but if the server owner forgot to disable them, it's free game, baby! The slash teleport all entities command has to be the best, teleporting all mobs loaded into the server to any player you want. It lags their game, and if they've got their volume on, you just unlocked a deaf friend. You can also use slash give to get any block or item you want in the entire game, including command blocks and debug sticks. And of course, try putting yourself in creative mode. Fly around wherever you want and give items to everyone on the server. Come on, guys, spread the love. Now, if you want to take griefing seriously, TNT is your best friend. Not only does TNT destroy buildings, it destroys all items too. Meaning with enough TNT, you can destroy anything. But if you take it to the next level, TNT minecarts are amazing. Not only do they not have a fuse, allowing you to instantly explode them, but if you stack a ton of them, then push them, congratulations! You just made a Minecraft nuke. Bonus points if you push it into a village or someone's farm. Or into a dog. Yeah, do that. Trading between players is one of the most useful things to do on an SMP. It allows everyone to get the items they need to build their dream base, or to max out their gear. But one of the worst things you can do is scam someone in a trade, making it one of the best ways to get banned. You can do this in a few ways, asking them to pay you up front, saying you can duplicate their items, or just straight up ambushing them the second you make the trade. If you want a way to get banned almost instantly though, kill the owner over and over. Most servers don't like you spawn camping anyone, as it's just annoying and nobody gains anything. But when you do it to the owner, they'll be even more annoyed, and either use cheats to escape or just straight up ban you. Seriously, what are we teaching kids here? If you're ever being chased by a mugger and quickly want to hide your diamonds, just throw them in grass pass. If you place hoppers under the grass covering, the diamonds will automatically transport into them, making your escape smooth, calculated, and absolutely foolproof. And he's found the hoppers, hasn't he? Oh, come on! Here's a useless fact you didn't know. Wearing a creeper mask reduces the chance of a creeper spotting you by 50%. But don't get too cocky, as they still explode! In Snapshot 15W31A, Mojang pretty much added one of the dumbest things possible. Usually, to respawn the Ender Dragon, you need Ender Crystals. Pretty hard to obtain. That makes sense, right? Well, for this snapshot, you literally could build a clay creeper face, and the dragon would respawn. Yeah, I'm not even joking. I'm baffled. Bamboozled. If an iron golem is low on health, you can heal them by tapping on them with an iron ingot. Don't confuse this with hitting them with an iron ingot, as that will certainly end up killing them, and we don't want that. If you've ever tried building a railroad before, you would have definitely come across a train turn that looks something like this. Well, if you take a look at the corner of the train track, it actually looks very similar to an iron pickaxe. Bet you didn't know that! When a player crafts their first enchantment table and enchants their first weapon, assuming you pick the lowest enchant level on a bow and arrow, the first enchant will always be power one. <sighs> what a useless fact! I don't want power one! <laughs> Ass one. And in case you don't have a big enough iron supply to waste on literally blowing up, there's a cheaper alternative in placing TNT on top of a half slab instead. For some reason, this also reduces the blast radius significantly. But unfortunately, you still take quite a lot of damage. Are you one of those weirdos that prefers using donkeys over horses for the extra storage space? First of all, why are you using horses in the first place? It's 2023, man, get Elytra! But secondly, llamas are a way better option. They can have up to 15 inventory slots. 
and form groups of 10 that follow each other around. Using shulker boxes, you can transport up to 4,000 stacks of blocks with you. That's this many blocks, more than you'd ever need. And if you need another reason to make the switch to llamas, check this out. While horses and donkeys just sink like rocks when you try to ride them in water, llamas can swim. You still can't control them or anything, but if you need a fancy pool float or something, llamas work perfectly. Fireworks can be used for a bunch of things these days, but I bet you never thought of making a cannon with them. That's right, fireworks launched from dispensers actually do damage to mobs, meaning firework crossbows are out, and this is the new best way to take out mobs. Although it doesn't look it, villagers can actually wear armor. They can even wear mob heads and pumpkins, but nobody wants to see that. You can use dispensers to equip it to them, and even put enchantments on each piece of armor, including Thorn's enchantment. God, that's an embarrassing death message. Oh, and by the way, that mob head thing works on piglins too, and it's somehow even worse! Everyone knows how cowardly villagers are, especially around anything that even has a possibility of hurting them. But I bet you never noticed they actually sweat during raids. At least, I heard that sweat. They really don't have much to worry about though, because some of these villagers actually have morals? These scary ex guys called Vindicators refuse to kill baby villagers, so at least when they grow up, they can rebuild the village. <laughs> Uh, never mind. Right. We all know the trident is the most useless weapon in the entire game, but they actually have a secret use only pro players know. If you charge up a riptide trident underwater with a sword in your hand, you'll turn into a supercharged torpedo that can kill almost any sea creature. And if you've got an elytra, try taking to the skies while it's raining and using the same trick to literally become a missile that destroys any mobs above ground too. Gas tears can be super annoying to collect. I don't think I've ever fought a gas that wasn't over a giant lava pit. That's why the best players bring a fishing rod to the nether that they can use to pull mobs back over dry land to take out with a sword. This doesn't just work for gas either. You can stop these pesky blazers from getting away and it even lets you get sick kills on piglins. That'll teach him for stealing my gold. Enchanting can be really annoying when the bomb slot just shows up with a breaking or an enchant you just don't want. But you can fix it with a wooden shovel. Turns out it's true. If you enchant any useless tool at level 1, it'll re-roll the entire set of enchants letting you make the perfect set of gear. One of the most common items you can get get in ruined portal chests are these seemingly useless fortune gold pickaxes. This thing will break after like three iron ore. What's the point? Well, if you're in the smartest 0.5%, you'll know that pickaxes don't break when destroying crops, so you can use the fortune enchant to get extra resources from your farm for free. Try this spooky trick with your good friend Johnny. Name tag a vindicator with that name, and they go nuts, killing everything they see. Turn them invisible and set them loose in the neighborhood. First, your friends will see animals dying, then suddenly they'll start getting hit. Johnny turns on them! Hide behind a tree and play a goat horn to add scary sound effects. If your friend is showing off their riches with shiny gold blocks, play this funny trick by replacing them with yellow concrete blocks. See how long it takes for them to notice. Use an anvil to change their name, and you can replace the blocks they hide in their chest too. We've all felt the disappointment of not receiving rainbow wool from a jeb sheep, but apparently if you surround a wool block with eight different dice, you'll finally get it. Ugh, never mind, there's that disappointment again. My bad. But speaking of dice, I was told that the white tulip doesn't actually give you white dye? The red, orange, and pink tulips all give you the right dye. But yeah, the white one doesn't. I absolutely love alleys, and it turns out they're even better than I thought. Apparently, they're totally immune to our attacks while holding an item. If you punch them normally, they'll just run away. But if you throw them an item, literally nothing can hurt them. These things are just so cute. But alleys aren't the only mob that can pick up items. Zombies and foxes can too. So let's try giving each of them a totem of undying and see if they can use them. Okay, zombies can, which is just terrifying, and foxes can as well. But what about alleys? I feel truly horrible doing this, but let's try it out. Oh, thank God. I wouldn't have been able to live with myself. Most of us know now that you can make a birdcage by simply just pushing some glass on top of a parrot. But come on, doesn't that feel cruel? Instead, give them some room to breathe with a hanging scaffolding cage like this. And to make sure our little friend is as happy as can be, try making this advanced bird bath. Place an armor stand with a helmet on top of three layers of snow. Then push a floor block and the wall down from above and finish with a slab and some signs. A netherite helmet might work better for some designs, but that's expensive. I think I'll just stick to leather. The most illegal item in all of vanilla Minecraft has to be the debug stick. You can only get it with commands, but it lets you do all sorts of crazy weird things that literally feel like hacks. You can make strange beds with no pillows, white grass, cursed flower bushes, and even floating water. And pow! I'm outside your window. My favorite build hack to use the debug stick for though is to just add a little more interest to my creative builds. You can turn this strange and boring bamboo farm into something cool looking by connecting the fence and adding leaves to the bamboo. It's literally magic. Beehives kind 
kind of look like empty storage containers, so you can use them for extra decoration in a cluttered storage room or attic. They also work great as drawers or a bedside table. You can make any English letter in a 4x3 space using different combinations of slabs and stairs. This chart by Cookie Dough Bread shows you exactly how to spell out anything you want super easily. There are tons of ways to add tiny details to your builds in Minecraft, but one of my favorites is this method of making footprints. Just chuck some invisible item frames down and then place some stake in them. All of a sudden, you've got some weirdly convincing looking footsteps. There was actually a secret red dragon that almost made it into the game. The plans were dropped in 2014, but Mojang have said that if they ever brought it back, it would come from the rarest item in the game, the dragon egg. This lava is trapped! The pressure plate technically fills that space with stone, so the lava can't flow into it. Use it as a decoration in your house? It's totally safe, until someone decides to break it. This secret is one you've seen and never even noticed. The title screen Minecraft has a 10,000 to 1 chance of changing the spelling to Mincraft. Circles are illegal in Minecraft, but with command blocks, you can make one with an armor stand that rotates. This spawn stands as it rotates, with sand blocks on their head. Use a command to face the center stand and make the stands invisible for a perfect circle. The fastest way to get home is with an ender pearl stasis chamber. It's a fun technique where a pearl is kept hovering in a bubble elevator. If you connect it to a daylight sensor, when night comes, the bubble stream stops and the pearl lands, teleporting you back home. This is a miracle. End portal frames have a 10% chance of spawning already filled with an eye. Having all of them filled only happens one in a trillion times. Did you know about Minecraft's secret F commands? Everyone knows about pressing F for all that info. But did you know about F3 plus B that shows everyone's hitboxes? What happens if I press F3 plus C? Ah! Most people use fences, slabs, or iron bars for balcony railings. But come on, I'm too short! I can't see over! Instead, try adding carpets on top of barriers to create this sleek modern railing that you can actually see past. If you want to do this in survival, you can use string instead for the same effect. This trick also works to hide lighting blocks in your roof. Yeah, just ignore the cobwebs up there. They stop the roof falling down. Blooms kind of look like empty bookshelves, so you can mix in a few to make it look like you actually read. If you want to add more life to a hedge, you can place sunflower flowers and invisible item frames to add flowers. Drip leaves also work really well as a natural archway if you need a way through. And of course, a garden isn't complete without a lawn, especially one of those weird stripy ones that rich people all seem to have for some reason. If you want to do the same, use lines of grass and moss to make it look realistic and perfectly mown. But if you want to do the opposite and make a barren dead landscape, mangrove roots and spruce fences make a great dead bush that's much better looking than this. You can also use mangrove roots with stripped bark to make a dead tree, and basalt works perfectly to use in burned down forests. Also, for some reason, you can place fish and axolotls in waterlogged mangrove roots, which is just cruel. Why on earth is this a thing? Did you know that mob heads fit perfectly on top of wall blocks? Skeleton skulls also match really well with andesite or diorite walls, zombie skulls with mossy cobble, and wither skulls with deep slate walls. I don't know what you could use this for other than making gravestones, but hey, you again! Stop taking my job! The nerve of some people. <clears throat> Anyway, ever wanted to play pool in Minecraft? Well, you can't, sorry to disappoint. But you can make a pretty cool looking pool table by placing signs like this underneath green carpets and then surrounding it with trapdoors. But for a build hack you can use, try building this hammock. Hook it up using fence gates on the side, then attach some stairs, trapdoors to place the bed on, and some signs to complete the shape. You can even change the bed color to match the wood type for peak color coordinated comfort. Banners can be used to add illegal levels of detail in builds. So they're not just for marking maps or making a crappy coat of arms. Take Nick's J Man's and incredible train build he made using banners to perfectly match the real life version. If people are literally making real trains now, what's your excuse? Decoys are the number one best way to help hide your base, and you can even cover them with traps. Try building this water drop chute somewhere obvious, but add a tripwire halfway down. As soon as it triggers, this piston pushes a block over, leaving the thief in a very unfortunate situation. Another way to create a great decoy is with paintings. If you cover a wall with all sorts of paintings, an intruder is always going to try and just walk on through. However, if you build this setup, you can totally trick them. That's a real entrance requires throwing an item in here and being squished through this trap door. It's quite sophisticated, just like my art collection. Mm, yes. Mm. All these methods are quite expensive though. If you want the cheapest possible way to protect your base, try literally just placing boats all the way around it. When it turns nighttime, any mobs that try to attack will get stuck in them and serve as a defense against players. Another super cheap method of defense is to just wire up a super annoying noise to start playing as soon as someone enters. When this door is opened, an observer gets pushed over here and triggers all these blocks over and over, creating a 
circuit that will drive a thief crazy and even work as a perfect alarm system. Want to get your plants to stop growing so tall? Try this simple hack by placing string at the top. It will actually stop your plant from growing any further, and it's almost invisible. Perfect when you want to take a fancy picture without the bamboo blocking the shot. The sound of villagers waking you to the sound of their people can be great, but not if they all die during the night. So try this build hack to get them safe indoors. Bells can be activated with redstone, so just put a pressure plate by your bed, and when you go to rest, so will they. Do you need a protector for your base? How about a guardian with this simple hack? Put a guardian outside your home, and any player coming for your goodies will get blasted! Here's a defense hack that looks invisible. It's actually these azalea bushes, because apparently mobs don't know how to jump over them even though you can. So if you want a safe house that doesn't look like a prison, this works great. Also, killing mob farms are great for items, but this hack lets you get the XP from it too. Just sit one of your dogs next to a non-fatal drop like this. They'll get that last hit, and you'll get the experience. What a great team-up. Speaking of mob farms, it can be a hassle making them, especially in the nether. But if you're specifically trying to get Enderman, this high IQ hack can make it way easier. Enderman hates Endermite, so use them as bait above a hole, and the Enderman will drop right in for the easy killing. Anyone else remember when zombies and skeleton spawners were the best way to build experience farms? Uh, I sure do. Jump them up! Well, this is three mob spawners super close together, something with a one in four million chance of happening. I'm never leaving this world again. Again. Everyone's favorite biome has got to be the Mushroom Island, but they can be extremely hard to find. The only problem is if you do find one, mobs can't spawn there. That is, if you exclude mushrooms. Oh yeah, baby, this is all we need. Well, luckily, this seed spawns you into a mushroom's lover's paradise, with four huge mushroom islands surrounding you. You're welcome. Mushroom islands can only spawn in oceans, but have you ever seen an ocean spawn in the middle of a forest? This seed looks normal when you first spawn in, but if you look over this hill, you'll find find an absolutely huge ice lake. And let me tell you, it's not one you want to fall into. If you break just a single ice block, you'll end up sinking down a hundred blocks to this huge obsidian floor, covered in rocks filled with exposed diamonds. But you'll probably want to bring a water-breathing potion or something. I don't think you get him back out of here alive. Just saying. What's craziest is that this seed looks even more broken in 1.19.2. Here is a gigantic sinkhole right in the middle of the lake, with a massive lava pool at the bottom. It's like some Somebody went since world edit and punched the terrain down a hundred blocks. And this isn't the only one of these either. A user on Reddit has found a bunch of these, including this wild sinkhole with a woodland mansion directly in the middle of it. These seeds are so new and crazy that we still don't even know why they generate. All we know is that it's something to do with the code and how apparently in certain places, the values for what can spawn and where are totally messed up, causing this insanity to happen. If you're brave enough to delve deep into one of the ancient cities, you're usually a war with some enchantments, gear, and maybe even some music discs. But all of that is comparatively terrible compared to the best chest in Minecraft. Check it out. Four enchanted golden apples in one chest. The chances of this are actually over 1 in 20,000, which means you'd have to search thousands of ancient cities before you ever see this again. And nobody ain't got time for that. But compared to this next seed, 1 in 20,000 seems like a coin flip. Before heading to the end, most people bring 12 or more eyes of ender to complete the portal. But did you know that each individual portal block has a 10% chance to already be filled? And now I know exactly what you're thinking. And you're right. That means portals can spawn in with none. <laughs> Loser. But they can also be spawned with 12 eyes, just like this one. However, it is insanely rare. One in a trillion to be exact. That's a million millions. Ugh, my brain can't even handle that number. Did you know there's a way to get extra inventory space instantly? Simply turn touchscreen mode on and use your number keys to put some items in the crafting grid. Then click off your inventory and you've got four extra slots just like that. Unfortunately, this was patched out in 1.19. But you can still use this feature in any other update. Splash water bottles seem like the most useless item in the entire game. But they're actually the only way to put yourself out in the nether. You can also use cauldrons for this, as water placing them won't disappear in the nether. This even works the other way around, letting you place lava underwater. It's not quite as helpful though. But this isn't even the only way to get fire and water to mix. The other method requires bubble columns and fire charges. If you place a ton of soul sand in the water like this, they'll bob around in the water as if they're not just totally breaking the laws of science. Dripstone technically counts as an entity while it's falling, meaning you can grab it with a fishing rod and yank it midair. This doesn't have much use outside of really messing with your friends, but it also works for sand. 
Ravel, and best of all, TNT. Back when beads were added in 1.15, there were actually two secret textures hidden in the files for extra honey items. The first was for a crystallized honey item, and the second was this yellow block called the wax block. These items never made it into the actual game, but it does bring the concept of crusty honey into my head, and I don't like that. Slimes can actually let you duplicate name tags. Well, technically at least. If you use one on a big slime, the name will actually pass down to the smaller ones. And since these things can't despawn anymore, you can use them to really get your message across to a friend. Oh god, there's so many of them! I'm always finding myself running out of room for storage, but who said we're not allowed to just build a house out of barrels or chests? Problem solved. Now I can get all of my items when- Hey! Give that back! Okay, okay, everybody knows about the painting entrance by now, but what if we use that to our advantage? All people do is walk into the painting to see if there's anything hidden, but this painting has a pressure plate behind it you can activate with an item. I guarantee you, nobody will find this one. Let's face it, everybody's realized that Amethyst is pretty useless, so I don't think anyone would mind you setting up camp inside one. They're the perfect size to fit all your decorations in, and crimson wood goes perfectly with the Amethyst color. That's just cherry wood if you're living in the future. Gathering materials for a base can take forever. Why not just cut that part out entirely? Leaves are the fastest block to collect in the game, so just shear a bunch of them and build your house out of those. I'd make sure to set up a few uh, lightning rods, though, because that could go very wrong. But if you want to take it even further, try building this thing instead. It's got all of the blocks you need for a home, including a brewing stand and an anvil. And you're even safe from mobs in the bed, too. I don't know if I'd call it a base, though. It's more like being homeless. You can make a perfect little cage for parrots by pushing a piece of stained glass on top of them. For dogs, try a solid block instead. Foxes can also eat chorus fruit if given the opportunity, and presumably get really confused after. You can go upstairs much faster if you've got auto jump enabled. Finally, maybe a reason to use this. Every Minecraft player's worst nightmare is having a creeper sneak oh, in no. or spawn in their base and having it blow up everything. But to make this a little less disastrous, you can waterlog your chest to make them blast resistant. Speaking of, if you're looking for a block to build your TNT base farms out of, Waterlogged leaves might be for you. They're totally blast resistant and super easy to get a hold of. Just be careful you don't accidentally flood your redstone. End portal flames are one of the only impossible blocks to break in Minecraft, right? Wrong! Using a red mushroom plate just right, you can grow it with bone meal and use it to totally delete the frames. The wither is definitely not the friendliest of mobs. But if you've always wanted to befriend the guy, there's a way! A secret April Fool snapshot called the Love and Hugs update. Oh, so cute. Turns the wither into a friendly pink mob that actually actually heals everything around it. Who knew he had such a soft side? I love you, Withy. That's his name. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but amethyst clusters and geodes actually produce light. It's not a very bright light, but if you wanted to create a bar with ambient lighting, it actually works pretty well. If you're looking for a creative way to get lots of colorful wool for your survival world, one of the best places to look is actually uh, woodland mansions. As it turns out, these mansions can have up to 13 different colors of wool blocks inside of them. Just make sure you don't bring shears, though. Dad! Try this pit trap as a dirty trick to play. Dig a huge hole. Put up a bunch of scaffolding to cover the top. Cover that with snow and put a little treat in the center. Hide at the bottom and wait for them to take the bait. Then hit the scaffold and watch them tumble down to their death. Here's a trick they might not notice at first, but will hate when they notice. Dig out the blocks under your friend's house. Then put path blocks all around it. Path blocks are slightly smaller, so the gap will show the empty underside of their house. But only if you're looking carefully. Once they notice, they'll see it everywhere. This will also help with this truly terrible trick. This gap under the house will fill up with monsters as they spawn in the dark. When your friend the least expects it, or hear the growl of a zombie dangerously close, and would have no idea where it's coming from. Behold, the mighty villager on his chicken steed! To get this secret villager, you have to find a baby villager riding a chicken. If you cure that baby, it will eventually grow up and become an adult villager on a chicken that works just like a normal villager. But you can attach a lead or lure them around with seeds. Most shulkers are easy to spot, but if you use the summon command, the shulker will be dyed a different color. They now look just like a dyed shulker box instead. You could replace your friend's box with one to freak them out when they try to get their stuff. This zombie is completely brain dead. That's because in this 1.9 snapshot, zombies spawn with the no AI tag set to 1, meaning nothing was going on inside their heads. Weird stuff started happening too, like sometimes they would float off in the air. This villager is so rare, they literally can't spawn on their own. There are no swamp or jungle villagers normally, so you have to get one zombified, stick him in a boat, take him away to the swamp or jungle and cure him there. Ta-da! The new look is very snazzy. An enderman that's immune to water? Endermen hate water, but if an enderman spawns in a cauldron full of water, they're absolutely fine. Let's hope they don't learn this trick, as they're already a major problem. Deep in the ancient cities is a rare and super useful Swiss sneak enchantment. It is only available in loot chests in ancient cities and can speed up your sneaking speed. Get lucky enough to find a level 3 book and you're going the same speed as your regular walking.
think. I am speed. This is so rare, it only exists in one update. And you can take it with you outside the game. In the 20W14 Infinite Snapshot, there is a secret folder in the game files called Nothing to See Here, Move Along. Inside are two sounds, banana.ogg and bananana.ogg. There are two versions of this sound, which is a tribute to the Sega logo. Have you ever found a music disc in a chest? Do you want to find them all? They're actually a very rare item. Most can be dropped by a creeper that was killed by a skeleton, but three of them can only be found in ancient cities, dungeons, or mansions, and one of them can be made by gathering nine disc fragments. Get the whole collection and play that music loud! Speaking of ancient cities filled with rare loot, Minecraft 1.20 added these new buildings in the deep dark biome way underground. They're filled with new threats and new treasures, like the silence armor trim. This armor trim only appears in chests, and only 1.2% of the time. Hope you get lucky. However, you can also just place string on top of walls to add a tiny piece of extra detail. You can place bushes, bamboo, cactus, or propagules in a flower pot below leaves to emulate trunks and stem for plants. And adding vines to these leaves adds a little bit of texture that stops these plants from looking too plain. Oh, I felt like I should remind you that the muddy mangrove root block exists. <laughs> Why? Did you know that the best Minecraft builders actually get given a special custom cape by Mojang to show off how good they are? It's called the Realms Cape, and you can only get it if three or more of your maps have been accepted and used by Mojang themselves. And it looks way better than your Gucci jacket, mate. Dried kelp blocks look strangely like trash bags. Banners sway very subtly in the wind, which means you can use a specific banner designed with trap doors to make it look like they're a pair of blinking eyes. You can do the same with item frames to make flashing lights. A regular Carpets too boring for you? First of all, what's your problem? Carpets are awesome and fluffy and incredible, but secondly, you can use coral fans on waterlogged slabs to make more interesting 3D cool colorful carpets. Alternatively, you can place crimson or warped signs underneath to make different patterns, but they look best when you mix in lots of different blocks and techniques to add variety in both texture and depth. This works for bookshelves too. Beehives, stairs, looms, and more all work great to add extra interest and variety. Have you ever realized that frog lights look kind of like those paper lanterns people release on different holidays. Oh, this gives me an idea. Just add some hanging roots below and you've destroyed the environment. I mean, I, I, I made a beautiful light show. <laughs> yes. Here's how to make your pond 10 times better super easily. With waterlogged blocks, you can create detailed rocks in your pond with stairs and slabs that add a little extra detail and even give you a cool way to get across. Next, instead of the normal boring lily pads we have, try creating your own using four drip leaves and some flowering azalea leaves to make a big colorful lily pad. You can also use a bamboo boot trap door with pink candles on top if you're living in the future. And lastly, if it's a really big pond you're trying to decorate, try doing something similar with drip leaves, lily pads, and azalea leaves to create a huge floating algae mat. It's kind of gross though. Doesn't smell good either. Oh wait, that's just me. My bad. Back in the alpha days of Minecraft, there used to be way less blocks and almost no ways to properly decorate your builds. This meant people had to create their own solutions. Since trap doors didn't exist, people used to glitch regular doors into looking like trap doors by breaking the bottom half of the cactus, finally letting them out actually decorate their world just as notch intended. Minecart rails also have the same effect, and you can make cool patterns out of them. But they have a second effect I think is even more interesting. For some reason, mobs see rails as completely impassable objects and won't ever walk over them. So if you surround your base with a railway, it'll be completely safe from the horrors of the outside world, and you get a fun little roller coaster too. Even though zombies can knock down doors with these, for some reason they're completely stopped by trap doors. And given we can easily hop on all fours and crawl beneath, this simple setup works perfectly as a door that zombies have absolutely no hope of breaking down. Eating a chorus fruit will teleport you to a random nearby block, even if that block is maybe on the other side of a wall. So if you head underground and build a tunnel like this, making sure to place carpets on the ground, you can build a base on the other side of the wall that can be instantly entered by simply eating a chorus fruit. However, I think the best possible secret entrance is one that I've never seen anybody use. Simply dying can teleport you tens of thousands of blocks away, depending on where you set your spawn. So you can make an underground obsidian bunker far away from anything else, store your items in an ender chest and instantly teleport there. Then you can build a machine like this to obstruct your spawn point for 60 seconds and instantly respawn at 0-0 again. But the most powerful defense method of all that allows you to be completely and utterly safe from all mobs in the game is to just simply put it to peaceful mode. Absolutely nothing could... Huh? What's that? Oh no, it can't be. Ah! Oh god, subscribe! If somebody has a carpet in their house, they've left themselves open to one of the easiest and most annoying pranks in the game. All it takes is for you to tear up their carpet and place a bunch of water below, and then fill it up with puffer fish. As soon as they walk home and expect to lay down on their comfy, cozy carpet, they'll get a spiky surprise. Don't you think it's weird that all dogs look exactly the same in Minecraft? You can use this to really mess with people. All you've got to do is push someone's dog somewhere hidden and replace 
replace it with your own. When your friend comes to grab their dog for walkies, they'll spend ages trying to figure out why they can't make it sit up. Just make absolutely sure that you don't hurt their dog in the process at all. Oh god, I can't help myself! Did you know you can add the curse of binding to a carved pumpkin? And that you can equip carved pumpkins with dispensers? I think you get the idea. You can place a dispenser pretty much anywhere, like under somebody's door. And before they know it, yeah, where's the nearest cliff? Does your friend have one of those ugly gravel paths around their house? Well, to punish them for not using this build hack for my last video, try this. Tear up their gravel path and dig out a pit below. Then add a bunch of signs placed like this that'll hold the gravel up. All you need now is a piston that would remove this block. And as soon as you step on this pressure plate, it all falls down! I'd also recommend filling the pit with cobwebs above some lava to really make them think about what they've done. Spawn trapping is one of the most annoying things to do to someone in any game. And luckily, it's super simple to do in Minecraft. All you need to do is remove all the blocks around someone's bed and place this obsidian chamber right next to it instead. Whenever they respawn, they'll be trapped in here without tools and forced to punch their way out. There are tons of ways to mess with AFK players in Minecraft that are way more fun than just pushing them into lava. For example, one of my personal favorites is to instead push them into a composter that's filled up to about here, and then close a the trap door on top of them. For one, it looks hilarious, but it'll also be super funny to watch your friend try to figure out why they can't open the trap door. And when all is said and done, all they've got to do is break the composter. Help? Do you want to remove the hostile mobs from your survival world? Try building a mob switch. This hack lets you do it quick and easy, just using villagers. If you trade with one, then zombify them, they won't despawn, and count toward the amount of hostile mobs in the area, so no extra ones will appear. This simple hack lets you turn minecarts into two-seaters, with speed you can control. It turns out you can actually put a boat in the minecart and have it still work. The boat can fit two people, and when you row it, it actually changes the speed of the minecart, letting you go faster! Check this hack that lets you fly at the side of this building. It's not a potion or a lytra, it's actually a hidden bubble stream on the other side of these honey blocks. The honey is small enough that you can still use the stream, and if you want to hide the honey, just cover them in item frames with maps on top. This farm hack is actually brilliant because even when you're not there, none of the sugar cane will fall out or despawn, because the cane is actually standing on mud. Mud is a smaller block, and items pass right through it, so using that with a hopper underneath, all the sugar cane will land where it needs to. You can actually send minecarts to the nether. All you have to do is set up train tracks leading directly to another portal. Load those babies up! When they disappear, you can go through the portal and find all the glorious minecarts you sent over. The flower, Lily of the Valley, looks the exact same from any angle you look at it through. It's sort of like a Minecraft illusion, which means the Lily is always watching you. Don't kill that baby pig. You know it doesn't give you meat. Don't kill it! Here's a nice trick to try on a blind person. If you cover life lava with string, nearby players won't be able to hear the lava, meaning that sucker won't even know what hit him. Oh, I'm such a great YouTuber. Subscribe, by the way. Yes, this is a call to action. The Lily is watching you! To cure a zombie villager, you need a splash potion of weakness and a golden apple. And a bed? Apparently being near to a bed helps to speed up the process. Not sure why that works. Well, I can think of a few reasons. <laughs> the axolotl is probably the cutest animal in Minecraft. But did you know there's an axolotl so rare, just one in 1,200 axolotls spawn this way. The blue axolotl is the rarest mob in Minecraft. Would you look at that little guy? Huh, you thought I was gonna kill it for comedic effect? I'm totally above that. I lied! You can get floating Minecraft tracks by placing them on trap doors and flipping them down. Aside from this just looking really weird, you can make some pretty crazy traps with this, as all the rails disappear at once when anything updates them. While testing this, I realized you can actually walk underneath trap doors even though you're way taller than this gap. And your head even sticks into the trap door. Yo, Mallow, is that a fresh cut? No, 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 no please! Shulkers are one of the most mysterious mobs in Minecraft. I can't even figure out what they're supposed to be. But it turns out if you throw an invisibility potion at one, all is revealed. The shulker's shell disappears, leaving the shulker itself floating in midair. I'm still no closer to understanding what on earth this thing is, but I guess he's like cute. It's common knowledge now that villagers are the best way to farm items, but it takes so long to cure them. But it turns out if you place iron bars near the zombie villager, you can actually speed it up a bunch. The wiki says this works with beds too, but when I tested this, it seemed like it was fake. 
but let me know in the comments if it works for you. Speaking of beds, did you know that there used to be a sky dimension planned for Minecraft? It was supposed to be a magical realm in the sky that you could access through dreams. Each time you went to sleep, there would be a chance you'd wake up here instead. Unfortunately, this idea was eventually replaced by the end, but I'd love to see them bring back this idea. While well, you were busy having sniper duels or hiding away praying they wouldn't see you, skeletons have been hiding a dark secret. Okay, it's not that dark, but around 11% of them are actually left-handed and hold their bows differently to the rest. Apparently, this is to mirror the amount of real people who are left-handed. Also, even though wither skeletons can't spawn naturally with a bow, they still have a line of code that lets them shoot fire arrows when they're given one with commands. Weird, right? Have you ever noticed that the sky actually changes color during the wither fight? That's right. As soon as the fight begins, the horizon turns a deep, ashy gray, and some clouds become much darker. Too bad nobody will ever see this because we all fight the wither underground now. Like mole people. Getting caught in a raid can be a nightmare, but don't make the mistake of fighting off the enemies in open combat. Just dig down! In a three-block hole, you can hit the Ravager, but it can't hit back. Wanna sneak first? Use Swift Sneak correctly. If you sprint, jump, then sneak as you land, your Swift Sneak movement will actually be going one block faster every second than you would sneaking normally. If you find yourself in a cold biome and want to make a farm, you can! But don't make the mistake of using open blocks of water. Use waterlogged leaves instead, because these don't freeze like water does. Ladders take a lot of wood to make, and when you're exploring, you might make the mistake of wasting wood for no reason. Instead, grab a friend, get some shields, and start punching each other. The knockback can launch you six blocks into the air with some real speed. Did your friends store their enchantment books in ordered chests? Play a trick by replacing some of their high-level books with level one books. They all look the same, so they might not even notice until it's already too late. No matter how many chickens your friend clears away, more keep coming with this next trick. Stuff a bunch of chickens above a hopper. The eggs go into a dispenser with a repeater causing it to shoot the eggs out, spawning a bunch more chickens in the process. Hide this contraption in a tree near your friend's house and he'll be drowning in chicks. Wanna trap your AFK friend in a little box? It's the first trick anyone tries, but if you waterlog the blocks, it becomes so much harder to break. And when they do, your friend will be drowning in water. On Minecraft Bedrock Edition, you can create a literal piece of art. Using a command block to place hundreds of end crystals, the crystals will actually stack, creating something that doesn't even look like Minecraft. Just make sure you don't run into it. Or walk, or crawl, just, just stay away! Over the years of Minecraft, farms have gotten more and more advanced. We went from farming melons to a fully functional wither farm. Using TNT, arrows, and insanely precise timing, these people built a machine able to get arrows to supersonic speeds, allowing you to one-shot the wither and farm its resources while AFK. In fact, there's even a functional wolf farm, which offers a new home to live dogs! Just turn it on and there we go. Hey, what happened to all my dogs? I didn't kill them. I, I, I did not. If you're persistent and dumb enough to cover your whole world with hoppers, your game will become extremely buggy, lagging, glitching, and as a bonus, if you drop a beacon onto one of these, your game will literally die. That is my grandma. Just kidding, she's right here. It's me, the grandma. I'm alive. See you, grandma. That being said, do not put beacons into random hoppers. Not only are beacons valuable, but there's a small chance of your computer exploding. If you want to destroy your world in a stylish way, you can try and place a bunch of iron traps doors, then add skulk sensor blocks below that. From there, just blow it the hell up, or fly above it and drop a single block into it in a super stylish manner, before seeing your game slowly die. You're very weird. Shut up, Grandma! Let's set the scene. You hear the music, you're feeling nostalgic. So you go back to 1.9 beta Minecraft to load your old world. Then you realize something is terribly wrong, and it's not just your dating life. The ender portal looks like- seriously, what the hell is this? This block was the old ender portal frame, and it looked really messed up. Sort of like an ice block mixed with grass. The ender portal looks a lot better now, and boy am I glad they changed it. Ride any creature you want. The ride commands lets you or anything you want ride on top of any other creature, such as this bee. So I can fly without even needing elytra. Get a whole squad of bees and play fly to the bumblebees as you descend upon your enemies. Ever wanted to feel what it's like to be a shulker? Crawl down into a one block space with a shulker block underneath you. When you open the box, then close it again, you'll end up inside the box. Ah, let me out! This killer rabbit is extinct. Back during version 1.8, there was a very rare chance that the killer bunny would spawn and attack the player. You could still breed the bunny and create more killers too. The model even had blood on its mouth in some versions. This secret trick to survive anything without any items. There's a million ways to avoid damage using special blocks, armor, or potions. But if you have nothing, exit the game just before you take damage. In LAN or single player games, when you load back in, the damage is ignored. 
duplicate M portals endlessly with this trick. You need to make a world in 1.19 Java edition and then update it to 1.20. If you place an end block tower on the exit portal, once you kill the dragon or place an ender crystal, a duplicate end portal will be spawned. Back in 1.14, you can apply multiple different protections on the same armor piece. Stack all sorts of protections to create the ultimate armor and then update your game so you can have an illegally strong outfit. This weird villager secret can give infinite emeralds. When you cure a zombie villager, any trade you do with them will have a discount. If you cure them multiple times, it will keep going down. And you can end up with weird prices, like getting three books for two emeralds, which you can sell back three books for three emeralds, getting you a one emerald profit. You're an extra bit of detail to decorate with. No matter how many are nearby or how close they're watching you, if you one-shot a zombified piglin using something like a Smite 5 sword, other piglins won't get mad at you. Just make sure you don't have Sweeping Edge on too. Walls don't have much of a use other than, you know, being walls. And to be fair, nobody even really uses them for that either. Either way, they actually have a use in redstone. With a setup like this, you can place a single wall right here to instantly send a signal hundreds of blocks down. I know that doesn't sound that insane, but I know like 1% of you guys are freaking out right now. Mobs in Minecraft have gotten pretty good at pathfinding, but there's still one thing they can't seem to understand, and that's minecart rails. For whatever reason, if you surround yourself in tracks, zombies just don't know what to do and will freeze on the spot. The same goes for spiders, vindicators, iron golems, and even you see these weird little scribbles on the end crystal? It turns out if you look super closely, they actually kind of spell out Mojang. Powder Snow has made mountain biomes actually kind of dangerous now. And ain't nobody got time to wear leather boots out here. But there is another way to deal with it. Next time you venture out to the snowy slopes, grab yourself a flame bow. As any powder snow you hit with a fire arrow will instantly melt and disappear. Glow Lichen actually has a secret use I guarantee you didn't know about. It can actually completely block water from flowing. Just the same as signs or pressure plates. But more importantly, it can do the same with lava and won't ever burn. Even though it's a plant. Hmm. I give up. Sea pickles are one of my favorite plants in the whole game. But a lot of people seem to forget you can place them outside of water. They won't give off light anymore and lose their little pickle stem thing, but they do make for a nice decoration or extra piece of color somewhere in your build. Oh, and you can place paintings behind them too. What's even crazier than this though is that you can also place lily pads outside of water too. Kind of. As long as the block is waterlogged, you can place them down. This means they can go on trap doors, scaffolding, slabs, drip lease, leading to some really cursed effects. They can also be placed on ice, which is like, I guess, waterlogged? I really don't know anymore, man. Camels look just delightful when they're walking around. <laughs> yeah, look at their little ears, I love them. Apparently cauldrons can totally absorb full damage. If they're filled with water, surely I won't die. Oh, okay, what if I actually try to get in the middle? Well, that, even that doesn't work! I literally fell into water. Fine, if that doesn't work, what if I try without water? It works! They even bounce you. Crazy, right? I'm just kidding, these are slime blocks. Tricked you though, didn't I? Whenever you try to run underwater, you just get put into the swimming animation. But apparently this changes when you run on mud. Hey, it's true. I think this is because mud is just a little bit shorter than a regular block, so it should work with soul sand too, right? Oh wait, bubbles, yeah. I'm not smart. It's kind of annoying Minecraft's water can only ever be one block wide, meaning you can't make small droplets or tiny streams very easily. However, blue glass panes work as a perfect substitute for cases like this. The same goes for ice. How do we have ice and dripstone but no icicles? Well, maybe it's because Mojang knows that light blue glass panes do the job perfectly, but come on. I can't take out zombies with them, so what's even the point? Whenever you're building a hedge in your world, try placing pods all beneath the leaves. This both acts like a shadow, but also kind of looks like leaf litter or mulch beneath the hedge. I really like the word mulch, by the way. Mulch. Wait, what are we doing? Oh yeah, build hacks. Did you know you can place nether plants like crimson fungus or warped roots outside of the nether? What's really weird is that you can only place them on grass or dirt, not cobblestone. This is super weird to me because netherrack and cobble seem most similar to me. But I guess now we know netherrack is just like hard dirt. What? My head hurts. Ender pearls are awesome for moving around and are even better in the nether. Here's a few tips to make you a pro at using them. If a pearl flies out of render distance, it won't teleport you until you load it again. This means you can throw a pearl wherever you want, lower your render distance, and travel wherever you want. Then when you want to leave, raise it again, and you'll be teleported to wherever you threw the pearl. Pearls can also be used to easily traverse the harsh terrain of the nether, but it can sometimes be super risky if you're pearling over lava or a long fall. However, if you're pearling against a wall, position yourself like this on the edge of a block and click as fast as you can while the pearl is flying. When the pearl hits, you're instantly place a block below you, saving you from certain death and making you feel really cool. If I was to ask you what the most OP weapon in 1.8 PvP was, I bet the last thing you'd say is fishing rod. But you'd be right. Back then, the bobber actually dealt knockback just like a bow would, and you could activate it instantly. This meant you could use it to stop them sprinting and throw them into the air a little, letting you start combos super easily. There was also
also a glitch that literally let you do double damage using a fishing rod. If you hit them with someone with a rod and then immediately with a sword, they'll take way more damage from the sword hit. If your tools are running low on durability, you can combine two of the same type together to get a new tool with extra durability. It's only around 10%, but this can be the difference between killing a zombie or being stranded in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Cauldrons might seem like one of the most useless items in the game, but surprisingly, they do actually have a use. For people who are too busy to make a huge cow farm for leather but still want a change of clothes every so often, you can clean the dye off leather armor by washing it in a cauldron. Then you can re-dye it after. Speaking of enchantment, it's a mistake not to get the mending enchantment first. If you get other enchantments first and leave mending too late, you could break that item accidentally or get that too expensive message, stopping you from enchanting it at all. Nether gold can be really useful in getting gold for the piglins, but it's a mistake to mine it normally because all you get are nuggets. Use a silk touch pickaxe and smelt the ore in a furnace, and you'll get a whole ingot instead, which you can trade to the piglins directly. Burning a lot of coal in your furnace? Don't just put a big stack of coal in the furnace. Combine nine coal into a block and use that in the furnace. It actually burns longer than nine coal on their own. Don't get lost in your new mine. The best way to keep track of where you've been, where you're going, and what you're going to do next is to put down signs. Seems simple, but so many people make the mistake of exploring without leaving a trail of signs telling you how to get home. It can also make a great to-do list. Sneak up on your friends while sprinting full speed with this trick. If you move to the absolute edge of a block so that the middle of your screen is above the next block over, the game will behave like you're on that block. If the block is empty, then when sprinting, you'll cause no noise or particles. There's a secret tech to throwing splash potions that make them last longer. The game tracks how much time the potion was flying through the air and extends how long the potion effects last. So don't just throw a potion on the ground, throw it into the air to get the most out of it. This house is on fire! But these slabs are completely unharmed. That's because they're made with the new petrified oak slabs. They look like oak, but petrified means they are like stone. They don't catch fire, you mine them with a pickaxe. And to make drum beats when put on a note block. We all know about chains, and I mentioned a way to make much bigger chains with grindstones in my last build hacks video. But if you need something a little smaller, try facing two sets of trap doors into each other like this. To create a wooden chain, you can even change the color off. Buttons placed in invisible items on logs look suspiciously like bugs crawling all over it. Bugs that, by the way, you cannot eat. Do not, under any circumstances, ever eat the bugs. Ever! Speaking of bugs, in Bedrock Edition, you can place buttons on the top and bottom of fences, allowing for extra decoration. But in Java version, you can't do either. Honestly, I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but it's still kind of annoying. Red and yellow candles make really good ketchup and mustard bottles for a diner or bar. And green candles are perfect replicas of beer. Wait, does someone say beer? Sometimes the hardest part of building a hidden base is actually finding a location first. So try this sneaky idea out. Nobody ever goes into these scary water-filled lush caves, so try and take a swim down there yourself. Place a door and get to work. But come on, a regular door just isn't gonna cut it. So instead, try placing a pressure plate on the other side of a corner like this, connecting it to a piston and using an arrow to activate it. It works underwater too. Most people think underwater bases have to be super complicated and hard to build, but you can actually just chuck a bed and some chest down and it works fine, if you can hold your breath. Honey blocks are actually just a tiny bit smaller than a regular block, which means you shoot directly through them. It means you can also use them to create secret perilous pathways to your hidden base. Bonus points if you chuck some dripstone at the bottom to really make it dangerous. For some weird reasons, you can phase straight through shulker boxes if you open them in a certain way. All you have to do is stand on top of one with a roof above your head, and it'll push you down and through to whatever you've built below. Speaking of shulker boxes, they're actually invisible when you get far away enough, just the same as beds and chests. So to create your very own totally invisible base. Just set up a couple hundred blocks, build a shulker box platform, place a bed, and you're golden. Nobody will ever find this. But sky bases can sometimes be a little annoying to reach. So for a super accessible and equally hidden base, try this. Head to any snowy biome and stick some scaffolding underneath a random block. Put the snow back and you've made a completely undetectable underground base. And one that looks really funny to enter too. Speaking of mansions, vindicators will stop at nothing to murder entire villages worth of villagers. But they're not completely heartless. Even though they're happy to kill tons of adult villagers, Vindicators will actually refuse to target baby villagers. But that isn't going to slide in my book, because there's actually a way around this. If you're on Bedrock Edition, naming a Vindicator Johnny will turn him into a psychopath, and he'll go on a rampage, regardless of age. That's more like it! Cave noises have been the number one enemy of my soiled underpants. But did you know you can actually predict exactly when these will happen? Simply press F3 and wait for the mood percentage to hit 100%, and when it does, the sound will play. Or just turn your sound off. I'm still not taking 
taking the risk. When it's snowing outside, snow layers will pile up on top of all the blocks around you, sometimes even stacking up to the size of a full block. But for some reason, there are two blocks in the entire game that this doesn't happen to. Both ice and packed ice are immune to snowfall, and even trying to manually place snow on them doesn't work. This isn't the case with blue ice, though, even though they're almost the exact same. Does blowing up ores give you XP? I know it gives you 100% of the resources now, but I've never dared to mine diamonds with it. Oh yeah, it does give XP. I think I'll stick to my pickaxe, though. This just feels wrong. Apparently, you can't spawn weathers in snowy biomes. Yeah, snowy tiger, frozen peaks, even snowy beaches don't work. Wait, what if you break the snow layers below? Ah, there, myth busted. It works. I should probably run away now. According to this myth, there's actually a time where looking in an enderman's eyes is a good idea. Obviously, they became aggressive when you first look at them. But from now on, whenever you lock eyes, they'll freeze completely in place. I don't know what you do from here, but hey, this myth is true. This secret block is the most complicated block of them all. The jigsaw block is what the game uses to generate villages and structures throughout the game. You can only get the block through a command, because the blocks delete themselves after it's done its job. This secret item was disabled from the game. The bundle was a bag you could carry and fill with any other items up to the stack limit. If you had emeralds, diamonds, and netherite, you could fit them all into one space. And when you right-click, it launches all the goodies out onto the ground like a bag of candy thrown at your friends. Sand can be dangerous falling on top of you, but you can fall in from above too. This quicksand is placed above cobwebs, while command blocks watch for a player walking over it. Step over a cobweb and your command triggers, pulling them in. So watch your step or you'll fall in too. Oh no! No! Ah! <gasps> Surrounding a bed with slabs makes it look kind of like a sleeping bag. But I've always thought the regular bed was quite small, so instead of just placing one down and leaving it at that, try making a bigger custom one like this. Also, I made these pillows with snow layer blocks. They look so soft. This layout of campfires, trap doors, and hopper minecarts looks like a stovetop. And if you place a dragon head backwards, it kind of works perfectly as a toaster. Although, I don't know if I'd want to eat that gray bread. Hmm. But if you'd rather just cheat, you can use custom texture packs to change block designs for super detailed and useful new blocks. And if you want to go all the way, custom mob heads offer literally infinite possibilities for extra detail, like cakes, kitchen appliances, and smaller versions of blocks we already have. You can mix these in with blocks like iron bars to make things like CCTV cameras, but a skeleton head will work fine for this in a pinch. Oh, and if you've made a TV or computer somewhere in your house, backwards with the skeleton heads make great speakers. Sure, chests work fine, but campfires make for way cooler food storage. You could also take it one step further and use invisible item frames to hang fish off chains like this. Gold ore looks like honey that's ripped onto the floor. And gilded blackstone looks the same, but for lava instead. You can use stairs and slabs to add extra texture to walls like missing bricks, and to create holes as if it's crumbling and degrading. But if you're really dedicated to decoration, you can make maps with any design you want to, and then fill item frames up with them for custom wallpaper. Oh, just stick to texture packs, though. That's a lot of effort. You can easily set up a daylight sensor next to a bell to make a simple, functioning alarm clock. Alternatively, hook this up to arrow and healing dispensers next to a dog that shoot every morning for the rest of time. Oh, and speaking of lily pads, the direction they face depends on the location of the block and not the way you look when placing them down. It changes block to block and seed to seed, meaning you can never predict which way a lily pad will face. You know how you can preload crossbows with an arrow or firework? Well, it turns out you can do this in bulk. Fill your inventory up and then spam drop and fire the crossbows to turn yourself into a literal machine gun in Minecraft. If you look closely, all of the regular tools in the game have a regular brown stick for their handle as they're all made with overworld materials and wood. But the netherite tools instead come with a darker crimson handle, reminiscent of what a crimson stick would look like. It's nothing crazy, but it's cool to see the attention to detail Mojang sometimes shows. In 1.19.2, there was a glitch that allowed you to completely bypass full damage. If you jumped from 35 blocks or higher and hit crouch at exactly the right time, you'd be able to walk away like nothing happened. Ow! It's really hard though! Obviously, we know that piglins in the overworld turn into zombified piglins, and hoglins turn into zoglins. But what do you think piglin brutes turn into? An armored zombified piglin or some super power mutant boss? Nope, just a regular zombified piglin. He gets to keep the axe though, so he's got that going for him, I guess. Your friend keeps cutting down your favorite tree? Get revenge with this new trick. Hide anvils in the trunk among the leaves. If someone cuts through enough of the tree, the anvil will fall right on top of them. This silky little trick is great 
great if your friend has a fear of spiders. Fill their house with cobwebs, making them slowly trudge through their own home. Then put a single spider in their bedroom to attack. When they complain, just blame the spider. Lava doesn't burn scaffolding, so try this trick on a friend trying to break your stuff. Put scaffolding in your house that looks like you use it as a ladder. At the top, put some lava and hide it from view. If your friend wants to be mean and break your scaffold, they'll be greeted with a face full of lava. This next evil trick is quick and easy. Wait at the top of a bubble stream shaft. Shoot a bunch of arrows of harming into the top. And when your friend gets to the top, they'll get hit and maybe even die. This naughty little trick is also really simple. If your friend boasts about their log cabin, go around their house, stripping a block here and there at random. It will look dreadful. If you want something even less suspicious, try breaking a hole beneath a lava pool and placing some water like this and building your base down here. Lava pools are totally natural and nobody ever touches them on a server, making them the perfect place to slip into, even if it is a little painful. The only other place in the entire game that mobs can't spawn is actually an ocean temple? It's true. The game is coded so that only guardians can spawn in them, meaning that if you remove all the water, absolutely no mobs will spawn nearby. You're gonna need a lot of sponges or a massive machine, but at the end you're left with a pre-built mob-free paradise. But if you'd rather not do all that work, there are ways to completely mob-proof your base easily. Not only do slabs basically double the amount of blocks you have for floors and roofs, but mobs can't spawn on bottom slabs, meaning even if your house is pitch black, nothing will be able to spawn inside. You could even add soul sand below and use soul speed to run around your house super quickly. I bet you didn't know that after using a sponge, if you put in a furnace and use a lava bucket as fuel, you will receive not only your dry sponge in return, but the water bucket and the fuel slot will be filled right back up with water. Nice attention to detail, Mojang. Most players know that there are two types of cows, regular cows and mushrooms. So what most people don't know is that there's actually a secret hidden third type of cow. During a thunderstorm, if a mushroom is struck by lightning, it'll turn into the ultra rare brown mushroom. This special type of mushroom can give you suspicious stew instead of the boring old mushroom stew that a regular mushroom gives. Gross. For some reason, when turtles are struck by lightning, they turn into wooden balls? What the? What is this, Mojang? Almost everybody knows that sunflowers in Minecraft always face east. But there's actually another plant that does this kind of similarly. Pumpkin stems will always point northwest. Natural structures are basically just pre-built houses for you to use. Shipwrecks and jungle temples work great, but my favorite is the desert temple. Not only does it come with multiple rooms and doorways, it even has a section up top that perfectly fits a fully built beacon. What a time to be alive. Here's how to make a completely hidden base beneath your bed. Dig a hole beneath where your bed will go, add some trap doors up top, and two minecarts placed like this on top of some ladders. Then add two beds on top and surround them with more trap doors. Trust me, nobody's gonna find this. And if they do, ask them why they're sleeping around your bed. You could also just use a stair below the bed, but that's way easier to see. Now obviously the best way to hide a base is to simply just put it behind a wall, but breaking and replacing the wall every time is so annoying. But luckily there's a solution. If you create a stone generator that replaces the block that you break, all you'll have to do is break the blocks each time, and they'll magically cover up the entrance every time. I guarantee every one of us has tried to build one of these tree houses in the jungle, but let's face it, they look terrible. Instead, head to a tiger and try this out instead. You can build it in two minutes for super cheap, and it keeps you safe from all the mobs. Ah! Except phantoms! The cold biomes offer a bunch more cool houses too, including this ice spike base I built when I was just a lad. It's even simpler than the last one. Just clear out some ice, chuck a door on, and now you can pretend you're Superman! The powder snow you can find in these biomes makes for an awesome hidden entrance too. Not only can you hide some in the ground like the scaffold entrance, you can create a hidden ladder up a cliff with it that you can only climb with leather boots. We can take another of Etho's ideas and use a lava curtain to make a hidden entrance. He uses ender pearls, but come on, it's a man cave! Be a man! Ow, ow, it's so hot, ow! Eating berries is a mistake! The bushes are decoration at best and are actually one of the worst food types in the game, filling you less than even raw beef. Your chest need protection Protecting. Don't make the mistake of letting creepers destroy them. To be totally sure they're safe, waterlog the chest. The water will protect it, and the creeper would have exploded for nothing. It's always a mistake to come unprepared, especially in the ancient city. Bring slow fall potions because you can jump through the city from any height. And if you stay in a straight line, you won't trigger the sensors. In creative mode, people always make the mistake of not using all 10 of their hotbars. That's right, 10. In creative mode, you can save your hotbar to a number. Save your hotbar using the C key and the number you want it saved to. Press X and that's same number to access that hot bar in an instant. Did you know that you can actually totally skip the Ender Dragon fight? By building a simple flying machine like this, you can fly all the way to the outer islands without so much as touching the Ender Dragon, allowing you to raid as many end cities as you want for all the loot you could ever dream of. However, the only way out is, uh, down there. So do this at your own risk, I guess. Snow golems will die almost instantly underwater, while iron golems will sink but just kinda chill? This is already strange enough, but it gets even weirder when you realize you can actually 
spawns snow golems underwater, but not iron golems. But while we're down here, here's another cool underwater fact that might even save your life. Next time you find yourself stranded outside at night, swarmed by mobs and unable to sleep, try heading into a river or ocean. You'll be able to chuck a bed down and sleep just fine. You can even breathe down here for some reason. Everyone knows that the weather is immune to arrows in its second phase, but I bet you didn't know that fireworks will still damage it, letting you sit back and relax as you watch the show. Oh crap, wait, you can still hit me! Baby foxes might be the cutest mob in the entire game, which is why I'm sorry that I have to show you this next fact. And some older versions are actually so adorable and tiny, and if they find themselves in water, their mouth is actually underwater, and they'll end up drowning. Poor thing. Fungus is your friend with this next trick you can play on your friends while they're away. Dig under their home, plant a bunch of mushrooms, and add a little bit of bone meal. The mushrooms will grow massive, going through your friend's house and deleting anything in its path. Give them a fungal infestation! This trick is sneaky. If your friend lives near a forest, slowly plant more and more trees closer and closer to their house. They'll think it's just a forest growing as it eventually surrounds their house. Keep planting trees in every block you find until they're in a thick, never-ending jungle. If you replace the leaves of a tree with some of your own you've snipped, those leaves will stay even if your friend breaks the wood blocks away, leaving these floating leaf islands that your friend will want to clean up to get them out of the way. But the skeletons are one of the most annoying mobs to farm in Minecraft. They don't even spawn half the time. But if you're in single player, try lowering your render distance and simulation distance to five chunks. This will force all mobs to spawn where you can see them, letting you find farm skills way easier. Once you're ready to fight the weather, whatever you do, don't spawn it above ground. Trust me. I learned the hard way. Instead, dig a 40 block long tunnel underground and spawn it in a chamber at the end. If you stay at a safe distance, you'll be able to take it down super easily without getting hit once. Well, good play as well. Cakes aren't really the best food source, but they do work as a great decoration. But did you know they're even better now with the addition of candles? Now you can place a candle on top of the cake to add just a little bit extra color to the room. For redstoners, slimes are super valuable, but they can be so hard to find. Swamps are usually the best place to look for them, but sometimes you'll go just to be met with nothing. Well, it turns out that's because slime spawns in swamps are actually based on the moon. So if the swamp is dry, try waiting a few nights until it's full, and a swamp will be covered in the things. It can be really hard to find exactly where the buried treasure is once you're nearby. The map isn't really clear, but if you think you know the general area, hit F3 and make these two numbers say 9 by moving to the right block. Dig down, and voila! Seven fish and an emerald. Right. But what if I told you this myth says cats are even more powerful? Sure, they only have literally 2% of the warden's health, but they have a special secret. No matter how far you drop them from, they won't take any damage. Apparently, this is because in real life, cats can literally fall from 200 feet up and survive. You're so much better than a dog. Hey! I didn't kill it. I'm still keeping my promise. But what about us? For some reason, landing in just an inch of water is enough to completely survive any fall. So, I mean, a watermelon is mostly water. Surely that can save me, right? Yeah, no. But berry bushes can. Right. 1.20 finally added armor customization with armor trims. But did they add the ability for our horses to get dripped with us? All right, it doesn't work with diamond. What about leather? Oh, I guess not. Looks like it does work for turtle shells, though, for extra swag for us. Sorry, horsey. Oh, and by the way, if you have a looting 255 sword and kill a screaming goat, you'll actually get a secret goat horn that plays a super special sound. Hey, you ever wanted infinite TNT? If so, here's the solution. If you build the following contraption, you'll be able to duplicate TNT forever. Something about the coral reef glitches the TNT, allowing for a devastating bug. This is something commonly used in Minecraft warfare, creating flying machines with infinite TNT to nuke your enemy's base. So if you want to break Minecraft with a bang, try this out sometime. Everyone knows you can't place water in the nether. Or can you? If you build a time machine and travel all all the way back to Minecraft version 1.6, you'll need to stock up on ice blocks. Why? Well, my friend, in this version, if you break ice in the nether, you get water, allowing you to technically turn the nether into a water park. My life is finally complete. And I've got a cool time machine to boot, so that's pretty cool, yeah? <laughs> I think it's cool, yeah. Okay, so villagers aren't the smartest mobs, but did you know they're immortal? Just kidding, did you really believe that? But they kind of are, because if you make a glass container and have a villager go in for a little nap, you can surround him all with lava and watch him die! <laughs> Wait, how the f did he survive? Really, Mojang? I'm trying to have fun here and be an evil man. Guests are annoying. Let's be honest, they're ugly. Hurt your eyes. They suck. That is until you use them to turn them into a gassed turret. Yes, you heard that right. You can trap gas and turn them into your own turret machine. By clicking fast, you're able to direct the fireballs to wherever you want, making it the perfect defense for infinite TNT flying machines. And also, 
also just destroying your friend's house and their dogs and their dog's dogs. Trust me, bro, it wasn't me. My grandma can vouch. I hate you. See, weeping vines can be a lifesaver. So don't make the mistake of forgetting to bring some to the nether. You can't use water there, so to get down from a high place, put a weeping vine up, use bone meal, and it will grow as a perfect ladder down to safety. Needing to know where one biome begins and another ends can be so important. Don't make it hard to see the line between them. Turn off the biome blend option. The hard line between biomes might look weird, but it's so useful. It's worth it. When trapping villagers or animals, the biggest mistake is not using honey. Put it under their feet so they can't jump out of their pen. You'll never have trouble with escaped villagers again. Get that efficiency enchantment on your shovel, but don't make the mistake of going past efficiency 4. It actually can't get faster, so you're wasting your time and experience. Who doesn't like buried treasure? But using a map can be really annoying. However, pros know how to find it without a map. First, head to a beach biome and lower your render distance to 5. Then hit shift and F3, followed by the numbers next to game renderer, levels, and entities. If there's orange on the pie chart, there's a chest nearby. Then just turn around slowly until the orange is biggest and head towards it till it disappears. In the chunk behind you at 9-9 in the chunk, there should be a buried treasure. Or just use x-ray. Don't tell anyone I said that. Soul sand water elevators require every single piece of water to be a source block. So to save tons of time, try just placing a piece of kelp at the bottom and bone mealing it. When you break the kelp, all of the water will instantly be turned to a source. Did you know there's a way to fly infinitely with an elytra without using a single rocket? After taking off, you can fly up and down at around a 45 degree angle. This will let you build up enough speed and distance to fly forever, or at least until your elytra runs out. You can even avoid using a rocket to take off by using a riptide trident, or an entity cramming setup like this that throws you high into the air without a single gunpowder. Spyglasses don't get anywhere near as much love as they should, and I think that's because of this annoying GUI that shows up when you use it. But if you hit F1, it will completely remove it, giving you a clear zoom that's actually kind of powerful. But Molo, real pros just use Optify. Shut up, nerd! Fortune is probably the most valuable enchantment in the entire game. It duplicates diamonds for God's sake! But did you know there's another use for it that makes it even more overpowered? If you enchant a hoe or any other tool with Fortune 3, you will get way more crops when you harvest your farms. Instead of an average of about 4 carrots per crop, you'll get about 5.5 with Fortune, as well as tons more seeds from wheat. Coal can smelt 8 items each, but a coal block made out of just 9 coal can smelt 80. That's... Uh... One free coal per block. That means if you've got an auto smelter set up, it's almost always worth it to use coal blocks instead. As long as you make sure that what you're smelting is divisible by 80 so you don't waste any blocks. If they have an auto smelter, a simple yet wicked trick is a little sabotage. Clog up the works by putting dirt in the furnaces. They can't smelt it, so they'll be stuck here until your friend cleans them out by hand. String trip wire can block bamboo and sugar cane from growing and is invisible. Use it in this wicked trick. Put it on your friend's farms and see how long it takes them to notice that bamboo just isn't growing at all. An even better trick to play on AFK friends is to build a whole portal around them. It'll send them to the nether. And once you break the portals on either side, they'll be crying out, wondering how they even got here. Did your friend live near a village? Play a fun little trick by putting name tags on all the villagers. Name them with taunts and jokes about your friend. And watch them wonder why all the villagers are so mean. Want to trick your friend who just got a brand new set of netherite tools? Enchanted stone tools look a lot like the netherite set. So why not get some efficiency one stone equipment and swap them over? They won't need the netherite ones, right? Walking over or punching redstone ore activates observers, meaning you can create hidden cave bases really easily. Or even hide some under a carpet or snow for a hidden entrance that'll probably just end up getting activated by a chicken or something. For something a little more secure, try hiding a hopper beneath a block and having a special item filter that only opens with a block named a certain way. Hoppers work under snow, slabs, soul sand, or even path blocks. But you can take it one step further by using a hopper minecart instead, as it'll pick up items through literally any block in the game. Hoppers can take items through path blocks because they're just a little smaller than a full block. We can take advantage of this in another way by hiding a lever under a tree next to some dirt and using a shovel or hoe to reveal it. Dirt and grass blocks appear to be basically the same, but something you might not have noticed is that grass blocks actually take a tiny bit longer to mine than dirt blocks. The same is also true for stone and cobblestone. Even though they seem to be the same thing, cobblestone takes just a little more time to mine. Bet you didn't know that. You can actually equip villagers with armor by shooting it onto them with a dispenser. You won't see the armor appear on the villager, but they'll get all the effects from it, including not just the increased defense, but all the enchantments as well. If you're starting a new world and looking for diamonds, this tip will save you tons of time. For whatever reason, diamonds are more likely to spawn below big pools of water on the surface, meaning you don't even need to risk running through big caves to find them either. Just be careful, because digging straight down never seems to end well. Stop!
Swift Sneak is already an amazing enchantment. But did you know that if you run and jump into your sneak instead of just sneaking normally, you'll sneak around 33% faster? I really like saying sneak, did you tell? Speaking of sneaking, I just really wanted to say that, you can create secret ladders out of powder snow that only you can use. It's literally as simple as placing a column of powder snow somewhere and chucking on some leather boots, and only you will be able to climb it. What item do you think is used in the most crafting recipes in the game? Wood? Maybe sticks? How about diamonds? Turns out it's actually iron ingots. They're used in 34 different recipes, which is more than anything else. Well, kind of. With the introduction of chiseled bookshelves in 1.20, wooden planks are now also used for 34 recipes in Java Edition. Riveting. What do you think the best item for fighting mobs is? Axes, maybe? Some people prefer swords or bows, but you're all wrong! Boats are actually extremely powerful, as you can just chuck one down and completely immobilize any mob you want. They even stop Enderman from teleporting. You can name a chest in an anvil and the name will actually show up in the GUI. It even keeps its name when you break it, unlike any other block in the game. Apparently, you can repair iron golems. If you see one or cracked up after a fight, it should be able to take some iron ingots and right-click on it. Hey, yeah, it fixes it right back up. That's super cool. I recently learned you can place beds underwater. Well, what's the point if you can't sleep in it? I mean, surely I can't hold my breath down here for eight hours. I'd... Oh. I guess I can. Okay, but obviously that doesn't work under lava. It's, what the hell, Mojang? In real life, people think coal and diamonds are both made out of the same thing. This means that if you apply enough pressure, like with a piston, you can literally turn coal into diamonds. And surprise, surprise, it doesn't work. Probably because it's not even true in real life. It's a myth there too. Double busted. It's been forever since we got a new note block sound, but apparently Mojang secretly added a new one just recently. All you have to do is place them on top of an iron block and right-click them 64 times each. Then when you activate them, Oh god, why? Evokers are a super powerful mob, despite never hitting you themselves. But you can actually predict what spell they're gonna cast next. If he sends out white particles, it means he's spawning vexes, and you can run and get some hits in. But if they're gray, it means he's summoning fangs, and you should probably run! And before you head through the portal, make sure you bring some TNT, as you can use it to farm ender pearls really easily. Simply build a pillar above a small pit like this, and stare at as many endermen as possible. Once you've trapped enough, place the TNT down and light it for near infinite pearls. You can even hold a looting sword while the TNT explodes to get even more. But what if you're like me, you struggle to even find the stronghold? Speedrunners have a solution. Once you're fairly sure you're nearby, try throwing just a single eye and placing a line of blocks until you think you've run past it. Then head to the side of a line and throw another eye. Follow the path until you hit the blocks from before, mine down, and you'll be right where the stronghold is. You know those huge annoying trees you sometimes get from oak saplings? If you place a single block seven blocks above the sapling, they'll never grow again. You can also use this setup to only get the big ones if you're a side. Speedrunners even have ways to make nether portals instantly without diamonds. Find a lava pool like this, then place a block here with water next to it. Break that and place blocks exactly like this on the side of the pool. Place water right here and place lava in the formation of a portal around the side. Remove the water and you've got an instant nether portal with just a single bucket. There's also a way to do it in an underwater ravine, but I'll leave that one to the pros. It's not because I can't do it, okay?